in Stillwater. Fans of all ages are ready to see Oklahoma State's high-flying offense in action. Now in his 14th year at his alma mater, head coach Mike Gundy knows all about the passion of the Cowboy faithful. Oklahoma State takes on South Alabama next on Fox College Football. Football on Fox is sponsored by Saltgrass Steakhouse. With Brian Baldinger, I'm Mark Folliwell, and we welcome you tonight to Boone Pickett Stadium in Stillwater, Oklahoma, where the Oklahoma State Cowboys host the South Alabama Jaguars. You've got to stay up with the times in 2018, even, Brian, when you have one of the great atmospheres in college football and one of the great facilities. So now they have one of the biggest video boards in college football that we're on right now. Well, that's a Dactronics video board, and if you're a big-time program, you've got to have big-time video. We're on it right now. They get, they get it here at Oklahoma State. Well, when you're a big-time program, you also are going to have a change of personnel. There are going to be new things at the stadium and new players on the field, like a quarterback. With Mason Rudolph gone to the NFL, fifth-year senior Taylor Cornelius made his first start last week, Brian. And I liked what I saw from Taylor Cornelius in that first start. First of all, he kept his eyes down the field. It's important. First start, be able to find Jalen McCleskey in the end zone for that touchdown. And then there were times when he had to make his stick throw. He threw five touchdown passes. That one to McCluskey as well. He was all state in high school in four different sports, and he shows his athletic ability getting out of the pocket, tucking this ball away for the 32-yard gallop, setting up another score. But the coach, Mike Gundy, wants him to throw in these games like he does in practice, and that one he'd like to have back. Eliminate those kind of throws, and Taylor Cornelius could be the next great quarterback here for the Cowboys. It was a 58-17 win over Missouri State. Last year, Oklahoma State beat South Alabama 44-7. But things have changed for South Alabama. They've got a new head coach, Steve Campbell. We'll tell you more about him before the kickoff coming up next. Jaguars. Well, of course, this is only South Alabama head coach Steve Campbell's second game at this school, but already he has his work cut out for him. In his first game, he felt like his team, and particularly his offense, got better as the game went on. But they found a spark with quarterback Evan Orr. So instead today of just playing him, they're going to give him the start. On defense, they know it will be a challenge against this up-tempo offense. They just want to keep their calls and their game plan simple. But guys, don't get them wrong. Steve Campbell, they're not just here to play. He told me there are no moral victories. Well, we'll have a lot of opportunity to talk about Steve Campbell tonight and, of course, in his 14th season as the Oklahoma State head coach, 51-year-old Mike Gundy, 115 wins, a 30-4 and career record against non-Power 5 conference opponents. That includes the 41-point margin of victory against Missouri State nine days ago in the season opener. Oklahoma State won the toss. They deferred, so Jake McClure for the Cowboys kicks off. South Alabama will start with Trey Minter returning from the goal line, a stutter step, and doesn't even attain the 20-yard line. The 18 is where number 14, Evan Orth, will bring the South Alabama Jaguars offense on the field in what is his first collegiate start and only his fourth appearance from Jacksonville, Florida, Evan Orth. Yeah, but he gave this team a spark in the fourth quarter in the 30 to 26 loss to Louisiana Tech just a week ago. And so they're hoping they can take that spark from last week and give it here a spark in Stillwater this evening. Well, keep note of those 74 rushing yards that were part of almost bringing South Alabama all the way back from down 16 to beat Louisiana Tech, but they lost by four last week. One thing they did frequently was run those quick little sweeps and end arounds to Kawan Baker. He had six carries last week. His first today, Brian, is for a loss of one. Well, he's trying to outrun Calvin Bundage on the outside, and there's just too much speed on this Cowboys here. Trying to run just that, that sweep to the side, and number one, Calvin Bundage, hard to outrun him. Bundage had seven tackles last week. Junior from Santa Fe High School in Edmond. Back to throw in the flat. Mentor cut back. 
25 ran out of a tackle first down and out of bounds right now we look at the players to watch brought to you by the Oklahoma Farm Bureau and we see South Alabama's offense and the Cowboy defense well those three res receivers for South Alabama are all effective Jamarius Way from Bell Glade Florida is special Kwan Baker had three touchdowns he, a week ago and Brailford Bundage and Phillips will be talking th about them all evening tonight Way was the leading receiver for South Alabama last year 47 catches 762 yards Minter who had the reception for a first down a moment ago now runs the ball on first down and penetration into the backfield he has to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage Jordan Brailford got in the backfield Justin Phillips credited with a tackle for loss he had three last week this one a minus one quick snap second and 11 zip to the left side catching spinning over the 30 to the 33 yard line that was Jamarius Way, first right. catch of the game. And Mark, I think, really, what you're seeing from South Alabama, they think the best way to move the ball is on the outside. The quick hitters, like we just saw there to Way, maybe the sweeps, because trying to run right at Oklahoma State, this offensive line right now of the Jaguars just isn't good enough yet. They're too young and inexperienced. Three players made their first collegiate start last week. A fourth player made his second collegiate start last right. week. Only right tackle Ryan Alexander has significant experience with 17. And now as of tonight, 18 starts to his credit. Second down, 11. And pitched to Baker. And Baker, strong wow. run. Really takes on a tackle of the 35-yard line. And South Alabama has moved the chains for the second time on the drive, Brian. Well, that's impressive. You know, Kwan Baker, three touchdowns last week. A lot of them just like this. This is just a, an option, triple option pitch right here. Look at that, how he lowered the shoulder to get yards after contact. 38-yard line, they moved 20 yards. And another pitch, and it involves Baker. And this time, on that option, assignment football is played well by the Oklahoma State defense with A.J. Green at corner, providing run support and making the stop. Well, Quan Baker is just going to be, is right here, and he's going to be coming that way on the pitch. He had two rushing touchdowns a week ago on plays just like that. A lot of substitution just made, especially across the front floor for Oklahoma State. Throwing it to Kawan Baker was Evan Orth. Another completion, but a negative play for South Alabama. Kenneth and Edison Magruder, the tackle for loss, and it will push them all the way back to the 34 for 30 14. Well, they wanted to go deep that time on the outside to Jalen Tober, and he had de decent protection to be able to hold it. He checked it down late. And on third down right now, the new defensive coordinator of Oklahoma State is Jim Knowles. And he likes to go to a three-man front with two linebackers, Phillips and Bundage, as the linebackers. You really don't know what Jim Knowles is going to bring. They're all up on the line of scrimmage right now. South Alabama, three for 13 on third downs last week. One for one today. Quarterback run, Evan Orth. Oh, and he's upended. The ball hit the ground as he did. It comes out. And as of now, Roll a fumble and a recovery for Oklahoma State. Malcolm Rodriguez is on it. The run went up to the 45. Well, you can see the ball right there. I mean, it comes down and it comes out. And so as soon as it came out, it's just hard to protect it. It's away from his body right now. Ooh, he's just lucky he's not hurt. That was some scramble by him and some effort to try to get this first down as Harper drives him into the ground and the ball comes loose. The ball is placed on the 45. There was... There's the explanation. Fumble, change yeah. of possession, play is under review. And Evan Orth's got a bloody nose from it. Now, does the elbow, when it hits, is that make him down before the ball came out? That's what they're going to review. Probably going to have to st stop that blood from coming out of the nose. He doesn't mind it. His first start. And about the sixth play, he gets a bloody nose here going airborne. Now, is that elbow down before the ball came out? It's a bang-bang play. Man, that is a frightening 
Yeah. And obviously South Alabama and Oklahoma State concerned about who has possession of the ball here. But what a frightening way yeah. to hit the ground. The bend of the neck. The force coming down on top of his head, Brian. He's lucky he just came out of that with a bloody nose. But right there, the ball came loose, obviously. We see that. But the arm is down. And so does that put him down right there on the spot? And that is what we will wait to hear from this SEC crew led by referee Ken Williamson. Devin Harper drove him right into the ground. The uh, the lineback from Oklahoma State going airborne trying to get that first down on third and long. He was upended by Malcolm Rodriguez and then Rodriguez jumped on the loose ball. The Jaguars had four turnovers last week on offense. It really hurt them yes. against the Cajuns. They forced three turnovers themselves. Yes, they did. But were a negative one for the day. The runner will hold down at the 47 yard line. It'll be fourth down and one. The ball will be on the right hash. Well, he had possession of the ball till the arm hit, and then the ball came loose. So that's the right call. Replay got it right. It took a while. Does South Alabama stay on the field and go for it on fourth down here? It's a great question because they picked up 13 yeah. yards on third and 14. I don't think they have anything to lose. It's the new program for Steve Campbell. He's won everywhere he's ever been, Mark. He's won at the junior college level, Division II level. He won at Central Arkansas. And it's a no guts, no glory move early on for Steve Campbell. Fourth and one, their own 47. They go for it, a running play to the outside. And Malcolm Rodriguez again knifing into the backfield. And Steve Campbell sees the drive come to an end on fourth down thanks to a great play by the Cowboy defense, the safety Rodriguez. Well, Rodriguez comes up from the safety position. He's unblocked, and he just comes free. He's coming right through here. Unblocked on the play. He was supposed to be blocked by Deontay Moore, the back, and he just didn't get in front of him. Well, Mike Gundy told us yesterday, Brian, that safety is perhaps the biggest unknown of his defense right now. Kenneth Edison Magruder, Malcolm Rodriguez, Tabo Mwaniki, and one of those three safeties makes a play to force a turnover on downs. And we see the Cowboy offense for the first time with an inside run by Justice Hill, then tackled by Malcolm Bucks after a gain of three. You know, Justice Hill has started 27 games for the Cowboys. His worst game was a year ago against South Alabama. Only ran for 27 yards in that game. An incompletion bounces out. That went off Tylen Wallace. Darian Mills diving to the ground came close to an interception, but it clearly hit the ground. It will be third down and eight. Well, you're going to see just a great break on the ball by trying to scoop that ball up. He led the Jaguars with 12 tackles a week ago. The throw by Cornelius is an incompletion. On the drop by Wallace. Third and eight. Second start for Taylor Cornelius. Flush from the pocket. And Oklahoma State not able to take advantage of the great field position after the defensive stop. They go three and out. Let's see what they will do on fourth down. About nine yards to go. Well, Cornelius is going to get flushed here. He's going to get outside the pocket right now. And now the chase is on. That's great pursuit all the way through. Sterling Fisher right there at the end chased him all the way out of bounds and Greg Stewart the defensive coordinator here has got to love that first series by the Jaguars. He was with Steve Campbell for the last four years at Central Arkansas and we'll see Matt Pocket senior from Norman. He punted twice last week against Missouri State first punt of this game hits singles into the end zone. We've seen South Alabama stopped on a fourth down. We've seen Oklahoma State go three and out. The Jaguars' second series of the game is right after this. Scroll this on Fox College Football. North leading the South Alabama offense onto the field for the second series of the game. South Alabama, who lost in Mobile to Oklahoma State 44-7 last year, visits Stillwater for the first of two times. It was a two-for-one in the series that South Alabama and Oklahoma State agreed upon all the way back in 2010. Or throws his first incompletion in four pass attempts trying to go to Trey Minter. He is the Bud Light key player of the game for South Alabama, and those were his first drive numbers, Brian. Yeah, and I said he wanted to give this Jaguar offense a spark like he finished last week against Louisiana Tech where he led him to two fourth-quarter touchdown drives. 
valiant effort in that fourth quarter. They, they played were, all three quarterbacks last week, Mark. Yep. They said there's a good chance we can see all three today, but I think that man, Steve Campbell, wants to see somebody take the job. Second down and ten. Low throw. Orth is he able to tuck that in? Is that caught? Yes, yes. it is on the ground. Caught by Jordan McRae. One hand, one handed with the defender all over him. He held the defender off with his right arm, and he catches it. Just traps it with his left arm. That's a great wow catch. I want to take that guy to a state fair and pop <laughs> balloons like that. Yeah. Third down and one. And in the hole. Wow, what a hit on defense. We just saw a great catch on offense. And then Calvin Bundage steps right into the hole, Brian, and blasts Minter and look, keeps him short of the first down. There looked like there was going to be a hole. Here's Bundage here. He stays unblocked. And then he drives that right foot and the right shoulder right into the leg of Minter and takes him down on third and one. They lose a the yard. Also helping to plug the hole was 295-pound defensive tackle Enoch Smith Jr., a transfer from Michigan State. South Alabama has the best kicking unit in the Sun Belt Conference. Their punter is Corliss Waitner. He averaged 45 yards a kick last year to lead the Sun Belt. He's averaging over 48 this year. Dylan Stoner jumps on the ball just inside the 30 for Oklahoma State, who will send Justin Hill, the leading rusher of the Big 12 last year, and their offense onto the field for the second time of the game. Coming up next. College football on Fox is brought to you by Saltgrass Steakhouse. Taste the certified Angus beef brand difference today. By AAA Insurance, at home or on the road, AAA Insurance. And by Oklahoma Farm Bureau Insurance, with agents in all 77 counties. Now that's huge. Oklahoma State's offense engineered 732 yards against Missouri State last week. They came away with one yard on their opening drive of the game. Now the second drive for Taylor Cornelius. A plate fake. He has Jelani Woods in front of him, but farther in front of him. He has Tyron Johnson, who makes a move at midfield. Now he's trying to outrun the South Alabama defense, and he steps out of bounds. Short of a touchdown, but a play that started from their own 29 goes all the way down to first down and goal to go for Oklahoma State. Uh, this is just a bootleg action. Tyler Wallace just came across the formation as... Oklahoma State is ready to capitalize on that last big game. Stepped out of bounds a little bit farther up the field at the 11, so it went for 60 yards. Now throw to the end zone, and it's caught in the back of the end zone, and Oklahoma State, two plays, 71 yards, touchdown, last 11, covered by Tylen Wallace. Tylen Wallace didn't get much of a rest after the big catch and run. Comes right back to the fade, and Cornelius drops it in perfectly to the bucket over the defender's head. You can see just a great throw right here. Just pops it in right over Mills's head. Mills was in good position. Wallace did a good job of squeezing it into his body. So it was 60 yards to Tyron Johnson. Then it was 11 yards to Tylen Wallace. Two plays, 71 yards, and Taylor Cornelius has his sixth touchdown pass of the young season. Good concentration as Wallace brings it in, and Oklahoma State's on the board first. Oklahoma State on their second series with their first touchdown. 60-yard pass play to Tyron Johnson, then an 11-yard touchdown reception by Tylen Wallace. Two plays, 71 yards for Mike Gundy and Mike Yursich on offense as the coordinator. 23 seconds for the quick strike for the Cowboys. Well, this is with the offense that has always been. Mason Rudolph the last four seasons with James Washington. This is the way it's looked. Nothing really has changed. Marcel Aitman, all the guys that have moved on, the next guys coming up, they're executing it just the way they used to. They were fourth in the nation last year, averaging 45 points a game, second in the nation in yards, 568 a game. This is a touchback on the kickoff by Jake McClure, and here's a volley's breakdown of the 60-yard pass. Well, here's Tyron Johnson right here, and he's going to run this crossing route right here. He's coming across the formation right now. And then Cornelius is just going to set his feet right here and make this throw to an open patch of grass and let Johnson go get it. And then the speed after it, running away from the free safety. 
One play later, the Cowboys were in the end zone. There was a missed tackle by Jalen Thompson, one of the corners for South Alabama right around midfield. Maurice Mayo is in the game now at running back. For South Alabama on their third series of the game. Evan Orr just has to eat it. Faking a handoff, faking a pass, and then Brock Martin with the sack. I think he wanted to throw the fade on the other, uh, the quick screen on the outside. And it was well covered. He, in fact, Oklahoma State looked like they were ready for it. We're going to intercept it, so he ate it and just went down and took the sack. Last week, Jim Knowles' defense had five sacks. A sack by Brock Martin for a loss of three. Seven minutes into the game, and Oklahoma State up 7 nothing. Mayo bounces to the outside. It's not a sack, but it's a tackle for loss. Nowhere to go, and the transfer, Enoch Smith Jr., making his presence felt with another loss of three yards. Well, they're strong up front. And, you know, when you watch a guy like Enoch Smith right here in the circle, he just gets that penetration over the guard and just runs right through the outside shoulder of them. And they're just too strong on the outside right here. You know, you're not gonna block the edges, and it's hard to block them inside. There's a big mismatch right now between this defensive front and UAB's very young and experienced offensive line. Those are two players in Brock Martin and Enoch Smith Jr. listed as second team yeah. on the two deep, both making big plays so far on the drive. And now the play clock is winding down and out. Five yard penalty. Third down. Well, they should at least get a timeout to save the five yards, seeing that it was running down. Kenny Edenfield, the new offensive coordinator. Of course, him and head coach right there. Defensive coordinator for South Alabama. Steve Greg Campbell Stewart. and Greg Steve Stewart. Campbell, all yep. teammates together on a national championship Troy State team in 1987. First time they've all coached together here for South Alabama. They beat Central Florida and Portland State in the last two games to win that D2 title back in 1987. And it has been a drive that has gone backwards on three plays and a penalty. Jordan Brailford pressure and just Orth sliding to the ground at the six-yard line. Well, here's Bra Brailford coming right here. He comes inside. He, he gets the quarterback to get flushed, Evan Orth. And then he had all kinds of help on the way. Between three negative plays of 14 yards and a five-yard penalty, that drive lost 19 yards. They need the big leg of Corliss Waitman, the punter right now, with Dylan Stoner back deep to receive for Oklahoma State. This is a short kick, and it takes a bad bounce for South Alabama. The last two minutes have been a very difficult two minutes for South Alabama. Oklahoma State has the ball around the 37-yard line of the Jaguars as we check in with Leslie McCaslin. Leslie. Well, Mike Gundy's initial impression after Taylor Cornelius' first game was that he was too uptight. They really want him to be able to settle down and let it loose, and he was pretty tough on him early on. When he went back and looked at film, he realized he only missed four passes. I talked to Mike Yursich before the game, the Oklahoma State offensive coordinator. He said, you know, I compare it to an Olympian who has really worked for four years for his moment and finally gets it. So, guys, that's kind of what Cornelius is feeling after not playing a game for five years. Well, he's got great running backs to help him, and one of them is in the game for the first time with his first carry. That's J.D. King, who will pick up four yards on a run to the left side before Chris Henderson's there. You know, one of the things that Mike Gundy told us yesterday, Brian, was that, that Taylor does know this offense like the back of his hand he says you don't fall off the truck and learn this offense as he zips it over to Tyra Johnson who had a long pass play on the last drive and then knocked out of bounds well you got to know what everybody's doing you got to know all the protections you got to be able to change calls at the line of scrimmage and it's not an easy offense as South Alabama does an entire hockey change right here entire shift six new players on this third down. That was a short pass play, only went for a yard. It's third down and five. And the aforementioned Taylor Cornelius, who already has one touchdown pass, will show off the arm by throwing on the move. And it's Tylen Wallace who caught the touchdown pass, grabs it, but is out of bounds. It will be fourth down. What well, was Chris Henderson that's going to chase Cornelius, and this is a good call. Foot out of bounds. Yep. 
There's no force out. Landed out of bounds. Excellent coverage on the outside that time by Jay Woods, who had an interception last week for the Jaguars. Well, it's go for it territory. Two for three on fourth downs against Missouri State nine days ago. It's fourth down and five, and it's a long five that they need. And whistles blow before Taylor Cornelius. Appreciate the game. Play clock, excuse me, it's 25 seconds, please. Thank you. Mike Gundy's asking why. Why reset the play clock? It, it was just the next play up. There's no reason to reset it. But it gives South Alabama a chance to get set here as Oklahoma State goes empty. Five receivers. Fourth down. Quick pass going deep down the left side. An adjustment to the ball, and a catch is made. Again, Tyron Johnson, who had four catches last week, falls in his second big one of the day. Well, it was bad coverage, and Cornelius just threw it up to a spot, let the receiver go adjust to it. And the defender was playing blind, not looking for the ball. The receiver adjusted. Now a first down and goal. King runs the ball from the eight down to the five. Here's the, the last throw coming right into your living room. Johnson does a great job of adjusting to it. Ooh, the right foot went out of bounds first, though. Too late now. Play's already been snapped since. Three catches, 85 yards for Tyron Johnson from Warren Easton High School in New Orleans and a transfer from LSU. And a quick throw, looking in that same corner of the end zone with the same receiver who caught it a moment ago, Tylen Wallace, but off target on the pass by Taylor Cornelius. So this ball is just going to be thrown right here to that spot. Just overthrown. Didn't give the receiver a chance to adjust to it. Seventh play of the drive now coming up. Third and goal of the five. Justice Hill is the running back. Cornelius changed the play at the line. Stutter step. Hill driving for the goal line. Ball may have come out right at the end of that run. It's short of the end zone. Down inside the two. They've already gone for a fourth down and five on this drive. Well, they like to bring their cowboy backs in right here. Britton Abbott, as we see Sean Brown down for the Jaguars. 310-pound junior defensive lineman. Yeah, you need those guys when you're trying to run inside. There's Britton Abbott, the walk-on cowboy back. Mike Gundy raved about how important that position is to this offense. There's a good-looking redshirt freshman, Jelani Woods. Every bit of looks like he's the, the power forward out there at about six foot eight head above everybody out there. Now, Brian, it's probably obvious what you would think they would want to do here. But what Mike told us yesterday is that they're at their best. If yep. they play two of those cowboy backs, they can play a heavy set, two wides. And then the defense either has to play man on the perimeter or gives up the inside run. And right now, both Woods and Abbott are out there for Mike Gundy. Great opportunity for him to work on his goal line offense. See if South Alabama just loads up the middle here. It's just inside the two-yard line. Fourth down and goal. Already one fourth down conversion on the drive that started after a short punt. And they will give the ball to Tyron Johnson. And he's sweeping into the open field and has a running touchdown. Just the fly sweep. Tyron Johnson just coming right across the formation. Just hands it right off to Johnson and just has the speed to outflank everybody as they were looking for that, that run right up the middle. Great call that time by Mike Yersich, the offensive coordinator. He already has 85 yards in receiving, and now Tyron Johnson has a rushing play, officially one yard, a touchdown, and a 14-0 lead after the Matt Amendola extra points. One more look at the fourth and goal run for the wideout, Tyron Johnson.
Oklahoma State at home at Boom Pickens Stadium. 11 minutes into the game and a 14-0 lead over the South Alabama Jaguars from the Sun Belt Conference. Tyra Johnson had a 25-yard reception on fourth and five on that drive and then ran the ball in from fourth and goal on the one-yard line. So a big factor. Tyron Johnson, long play on their yeah. first touchdown drive as well. Big uh, transfer from LSU. He was a five-star recruit out of New Orleans. Had to sit out, but now getting an opportunity to play. And, and uh, really, you know, LSU doesn't throw the ball the way Oklahoma State does. So it's better for a wide receiver to play here in Stillwater. He had a 118-yard receiving day against Oklahoma last year. Yep. Had three touchdown catches at about 300 yards, but obviously a lot more balls coming his direction with James Washington and Marcel Aitman out of the picture. Kickoff all the way through the end zone as we hear more from Leslie McCaslin about defensive coordinator Jim Knowles. Well, it's interesting hearing from Mike Gundy what he liked about Jim Knowles. And one of the things is just how focused he is on the X's and O's. He called him a brainiac. Of course, he came from Duke, went to an Ivy League school. But he said, I was amazed when I actually saw him in action on the sidelines because this guy was intense. And he is, guys. He is a guy that gets fired up. You can see him waving his arms in the air fanatically. So it may be that he's a brainiac, but uh, he's also a big football fan. A graduate of Cornell, former head coach there eight years on the staff at Duke his defense has held South Alabama to 20 yards in three series and an incomplete pass to Jamarius way on the first play of this drive well Jim Knowles was a coach with David Cutcliffe at Duke he was there at Ole Miss as Darius Williams does a good job here of breaking up this pass the safety for Oklahoma State but Jim Knowles had a hard time leaving Duke but he said he needed to go to a division and where they really score points and try to keep it down. It was the next step in his career. Sweep to Kawan Baker. Got a big block. block on the edge and dives out near the first down. He's a little bit shy, probably a yard and a half away from what they need for the first down. Yeah, I think I saw a big block that time by Deontay Moore on the outside. Here he comes. It's going to be a block right on Calvin Bundage. Does a good job of pulling his hands off, not to hold them. But to get a body on bondage, and you got to block him if you want to run the ball on the outside. Long yard needed now for South Alabama on third down after the running play by Baker. He'll have another chance. They sweep it to him again. Stutter step down the sideline. First down. Bumped out of bounds around the 45. That can win. Yeah, I tell you, all these young players for South Alabama are impressive. Quan Baker is one right here. That's just a fly sweep. He gets a block on the outside. But physically, I mean, he's big. I mean, six foot five. Well over 200 pounds, along with uh, McCray, Jamarius Way. That's their best opportunity to move the ball if they can keep getting the ball in their hands. Baker is a sophomore from Atlanta who ran it for 51 yards last week. Evan Orth, the quarterback, will keep it. He's blasted at the 50, but it's a five-yard run for Orth. The quarterback transferred from UAB, making his first collegiate start in just his fourth appearance tonight. They also like to play an up-tempo offense right now. They've got a little bit of a rhythm. And in that rhythm, they'll throw the ball and Way catches on the edge. First down, steps out of bounds. Two first downs on the drive. The gain goes for seven as he stepped out of the Oklahoma State 43, pushed out by Rodarius Williams. That's Jamarius Way is from Bell Glade, Florida, the muck. So many great players from that area of Florida. Just uh, is 6'2", 220 pounds, fast. You can get the ball to him. He can make some plays now. Look at Rodarius Williams right up to him. Motion by Sam Harris. The ball goes the other way for the motion man with the running back Trey Minter. Blasted to the line of scrimmage. Ball came out. Play is dead. No gain thanks to A.J. Green and Jarrell Owens, among others, for the Cowboy defense. Well, you're going to get just a good play right here by Brock Martin. He's just going to get good penetration, stand up, take on the pulling guard, stacks him, and then all the help. Jarrell Owens comes to come clean him up. Martin had a sack earlier in the first quarter for the Cowboys. 90 seconds left of the first quarter. Oklahoma State has a 14-0 lead. 
Mm. Batted up into the air and incomplete. Looking for Collier Smith. Yeah, the tight end. I think Evan Orth really wanted, you know, he was still a little too long on this play. And he just hitched one too many times and great defensive play there by Kenneth Edison Magruder as Oklahoma State's trying to find some new safeties on this defense. Edison Magruder is a senior from the Houston area. South Alabama now with a minute 19 left of the first quarter has a third down and nine. Now watch the speed on the outside right here. Here comes Bundage. Fourth to throw, adjustment to the ball, and a catch is made, and it is ruled as a catch at the 24-yard line. That is Jamarius Way inside the 25. Roughing the pass, a low hit, number one. The 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. So you have a catch by Way and then a personal foul on Bundage. Well, Bundage comes around. He beats the left tackle on the outside. That's the low hit. That's the personal foul. That's a good call. And then this, th the reaction and the adjustment by Way, as we just got done talking about how strong he is, he holds off for Darius Williams, who's all over him, and still comes down with the catch. That's an impressive play all the way around. On the road, Darius Williams trying to get his arms around him, but Way is, he's got his way with him. The penalty is half the distance for the personal foul, roughing the passer. The play went for 19 yards. The penalty adds on 12 more. Then an option pitch, and Minter knocks right. Baker is able to elude the tackle and has his fourth touchdown of the year. It's Kawan Baker running it into the end zone, and South Alabama is on the board in the last minute of the first quarter. Well, they got to love it. They got to love it. Triple option right there. Kawan Baker ran for two of those last week, and he gets into the end zone here against Jim Knowles' defense. And Baker's just coming on the outside right here. Great job by Evan Orth of playing point guard. He makes the guy miss, and then he finishes strong to get into the end zone, and the Jaguars are on the board. They got to feel tremendous. Gavin Patterson, extra point. Kawan Baker last week tied the South Alabama record for touchdowns in a game with three. Two on the ground, one receiving. On the ground for this run from 12 yards out after the long pass play and penalty had moved it deep down into the red zone for the Jaguars, Brian. Well, he had made uh, Tabo Waniki miss on the outside, and then he kept his eyes up. Bad tackling at the end by Oklahoma State, and I'm sure that will be addressed by Jim Knowles, but take nothing away from Quan Baker and Jamarius Way and the plays that they just made for South Alabama. Only in their 10th year as a, as a football program. Steve Campbell took over for Joey Jones, who had been the only coach that they had had with the Jaguars, who had led them up through the ranks. They've been an FBS since 2012. This is the first time that Steve Campbell has been an FBS head coach, Brian, despite never having a losing season, as you pointed out earlier, in 19 years of coaching, two stops at the JUCO level, including a decade at Mississippi Gulf Coast, yep. where he won an NJCAA national championship, sure a D2 national champion at Delta State back in 2000, Southland Conference Coach of the Year, two 10-win seasons, most recently at Central Arkansas, his resume is incredible when you look at it as Campbell's Jaguars send a kickoff a yard deep into the end zone and L.D. Brown is dancing and running it out and out of bounds at the 15-yard line. You know, we talked to him earlier this week, Brian. He said, you know, that he never got impatient, though, waiting for an FBS job. He said the key was the big time is where you're at. And he said, I love junior college, taking guys and helping guys who for one reason and another weren't in the SEC or the Big 12 but had the ability to be there. You know what Steve Campbell loved? He loves players where football is important to him. It's a way out. And he knows in Mississippi and Louisiana and parts of Florida, it's a way out of some of these areas and it's a way for an opportunity. Yeah. To never have a losing record in as a head coach years. in 19 years. That's a great statement. 15-yard line for Oklahoma State, and now the defense for South Alabama lifted with some energy thanks to what happened on offense. Chuba Hubbard down for a loss. Tyree Turner. Tyree Turner is going to be penetrating. 
Back to throw Cornelius now. Quick play. Second down. Out to the right side. Caught. Oh, moves made. Nicely done by Dylan Stoner. First down and a little more. Up near the 30. That's good arm strength that time by Cornelius to get the ball all the way to the outside to Stoner. They got inside receivers and outside receivers, and Stoner plays outside. Going for 15 yards to Dylan Stoner. Now onto the left side, and a block is made, and charging up to the 45-yard line with a ball for Oklahoma State is Landon Wolf, who had two grabs last week in the opener. Well, right down the, sh the road here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. They are in overdrive right now, speed-wise. That went for 15 yards, and then lofted down the left side and incomplete with three seconds left in the first quarter. Previously to Landon Wolf for 15 yards a moment ago, Brian. Well, here's uh, the previous quick hitter outside to Wolf. Nobody was guarding the slot, and Taylor Cornelius' job is to find that open receiver when they have a trouble lining up after a quick snap. Two former walk-ons now on scholarship hooking up on that play. Taylor yeah. Cornelius to Landon Wolf. And a delay handoff, and running straight up the middle is the speedster from Alberta, Chuba Hubbard. Last play of the first quarter, surges over midfield into South Alabama territory. Say that again, Mark. From Alberta, Canada. Yes, sir. Where he averaged 15 yards a carry coming out of the Great White North. He is fast, and on that play, he ran for 18 yards to end an exciting first quarter with Oklahoma State doubling up South Alabama. 14-7, this is Fox College Football. Boone Pickens Stadium holds about 57,000. They announced just over 50,000 last week, probably in excess of that tonight, watching Oklahoma State play their second game of the year. Mike Gundy's Cowboys lead the South Alabama Jaguars of the Sun Belt Conference 14-7, and Oklahoma State on the move late first quarter as we now move into the second. Last play was Chuba Hubbard for 18 yards. Hubbard is the running back, and Taylor Cornelius in his second collegiate start after playing eight games over the last few years. Has a backup to Mason Rudolph. He can certainly make the throws as he puts that one right between the one and the three of Tyron Johnson, who's gone over 100 yards receiving in the game with that catch. That was a rifle shot that time by Taylor Cornelius. Outside, defense number seven. Penalty is declined. The throw to the play is a first down. He can spin it now. I mean, he's got a good release. It comes out quick. The guy that is making his second college start and has played limited time behind a great player in Mason Rudolph, he has been impressive. Throwing for four times and 105 yards tonight to Tyron Johnson. He goes to Jalen McCleskey, who was bumped out of bounds by Nigel Lawrence. Last week, Taylor Cornelius completed 25 passes in his collegiate career prior to that yeah. he had only attempted 24 passes there you go eight games backing up Mason Rudolph over the past few seasons Chuba Hubbard using that speed to get to the outside but the speed doesn't get him anywhere he gets hammered loss of a couple of yards on the play a big hit just good pursuit this time Chuba Hubbard trying to get to the outside. Good finishing tackles from Bull Barge. Taji Stewart in there as well. Now Cornelius under pressure and tipped up for a loss. It's a sack and it's a big one on third down and eight. Sterling Fisher able to get enough of Cornelius' legs to bring him down all the way back at the 28. You love the effort here of Sterling right here on this play. Fisher just chasing Cornelius all the way to the outside. Stayed with it. Well, here he comes. He comes from the second level and stays with him right now and gets him down. The outside linebacker, good pursuit once Cornelius got outside. From Lansdale, Pennsylvania, this is Matt Amendola, who was 16 of 19 on field goals last year. And that one's going to bend inside the upright and clear the crossbar. And it's 13 in a row. Field goals made now 
for Matt Amendola of Oklahoma State. Greg Stewart and his South Alabama defense still like the hold as they're able to keep them to a field goal after they got into the red zone. And a look at that field goal that will curl inside the upright to give the Cowboys a 10-point lead. Cloudy all day in still water, but no rain in the immediate vicinity. It's a very comfortable night for yeah. early September, September the 8th, Oklahoma State's second game, South Alabama's second game as well. Cowboys won last week. Jaguars lost to Louisiana Tech. It's a 17-7 lead right now for Oklahoma State after Matt Amendola's 45-yard field goal a moment ago. Jake McClure, short kickoff, return. Trey Minter over the 25 around the 27 yard line as we play early in the second quarter and we look at the principal financial game plan Brian and for the Jaguars they want to improve every snap especially on the offensive line where they're very young and they want to sell out to stop the run stop Justice Hill and JD King and then for Oklahoma State play like you practice starting with the quarterback just cut it loose play hard play fast and defensively under Jim Knowles execute the scheme it's a new scheme it's a new way of doing things everyone's kind of learning right now as they go forward. Evan Orth is learning as he goes forward, making his first collegiate start tonight at quarterback for South Alabama. Juan Baker has a touchdown run. Baker went in motion. It will be a handoff straight up the middle, and after an initial surge and a pop through a hole by Maurice Mayo, he doesn't go very much farther as Malcolm Rodriguez, who had a fourth down tackle tonight, has a tackle here on first down. Yeah, well, I mean, right there, Mayo's got a little bit of a a little bit of breathing room is Roy Britton, big number 71, 325 pound junior out of Pensacola, tries to body up Darian Daniels. Roy Britton and Rowan Godwin share reps at right guard on the South Alabama offensive line. That was Mayo who just ran the ball for two. A throw to the left side, and the first catch of the game is made tonight by Jalen Tolbert. He went to McGill Tulin High School right in Mobile. Very good program. There's a marker down at the end of a play, a pass that went over the 35 to the 36. Good job of Tober breaking the first tackle. Getting to the outside. The best thing they've done so far is those quick screens to the outside. Personal foul, targeting number three. Wow. Previous mm. play is under review. As all targeting plays are. Yeah. Kenneth, and Kenneth Edison Magruder could see a premature end to his night. Well, let's watch number three, the safety, come up and put this hit. Ooh. Um, that's the definition of targeting. I saw it once. You're going to see this collision right here, right helmet to helmet. And it's going to be hard to argue against it, as unfair sometimes as it is for a guy like Kenneth Edison Magruder to control it. I don't think that they can overrule the first look at it. There's helmet to helmet, and it certainly isn't going to help his case that Jalen Tolbert went flying yeah. yes. into the sideline. You can see just what edit. Here we go. Targeting on number three. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. By rule, number three is disqualified from the ball game. Well, he has the reputation of being a big hitter. That doesn't go against him. It's just the rule. And they've been trying to clean it up in college and in the NFL. And players have begun to adjust. But right here, that's the definition of targeting. Lowering the helmet right there and hitting Toba right in the head. And they're trying to take that hit out of all of football. And the only way sometimes you can do it is to take the player off the field. There have been two personal fouls in this game now for Oklahoma State as it's flipped out into the flat into open space for Kawan Baker. And Baker out of bounds on that snap for the 49. It moves down to the Oklahoma State 41. Eight yards. That Baker is a playmaker. He was last week. He has been today. And when you're ejected, you're ejected. I mean, you go off the field. You take the helmet off. You don't come out for the second half. Done for the day. And Quan Baker continues to make plays for him, whether he's running it or that last reception on the outside. Baker has two catches for five yards, six runs for 36 yards. Here's a running play, and Darian Daniels hammers Trey Minter. Minter pays the price 
to perhaps pick up a first down, depending on the spot. It is put at the 39-yard line, and it will be a first down. Trey Minner, who came in starting six games a year ago, he takes, look, that's a tough run. He got the yards that were there, and he got a first down. And he'll run the ball again, and it opened up for a moment, and then he is thrown That's down bondage. with authority by Calvin Bundage. That looked like WWE, like off the turnbuckle. Slam a minute to the ground. Watch Bundage come in here, wrap him up, and then finish the run. Body slamming him. All legal. Good physical tackle by Bundage. It's been a tough last four yards on the ground for <laughs> yeah. Trey Minter, yeah. hasn't it? He, he needed a little bit of a break. He got belted by Darian Daniels and then thrown to the ground by Calvin Bundage. It's second and eight South Alabama at the Cowboy 37. Play fake Evan North low throw looking for Sam Harris on a pass. He had Harris too on the slant across the middle. And it just wasn't accurate with the throw. I'd like to have that one back because he had good protection. Jim Knowles giving the signals here. New defensive coordinator. Told me before the game, Brian, yeah. Leslie and I, and you, we were talking to him, and he said, look, I wanted the challenge of being in the best conference for offense. And I said, well, in your words, why is it the best? They spread out the field, yeah. the tempo's fast, and every team <laughs> is willing to throw the ball deep down the field. Yeah. We might see one here. It's a running play. They'll sweep it to the left side on third down and stood up shy of the first down. It's a carry for Sam Harris. He needed the 29 and is stopped well shy. Three yards shy. Fourth down coming up. Devin Harper with the tackle. I think they're going to stay on the field. I mean, it's fourth down right here. Fourth and four. Stay on the field. Do whatever you can. Call a play that you haven't called before that you feel confident about. Try and keep that defense off the field. And keep them rested as the paddles get louder and harder in Boone Pickens. As the Jaguars move toward that end of the field. Fourth and three. They've already missed on one fourth down tonight, and they have that one, but it's dropped. They had it at the 29, inside the 28. Jamarius Way, their leading receiver. He was there, didn't hang on. He knew it, too. Orth did exactly what he needed to do. Just a quick slant, put the ball right in the belly away, and that's something that you don't see much from Jamarius Way, that drop. This ball is thrown with authority. I think Way was thinking about running before he looked it all the way in. It's a tad bit behind, but this obviously very catchable. Very catchable ball. It can't be perfect against this defense all the time. That's too bad, though. He had a great opportunity as he talks to Orth here about the last throw and the last play. Second time that South Alabama's turned the ball over on downs. Here's a running play, and it is taken up by J.D. King over the 45-yard line, and a first down's picked up by King, the sophomore running back who had 52 yards in the opener last week. Good-looking running back, as so many of them are here at Oklahoma State. Got it all sides, and no whistle. Got a free play. Cornelius throwing to the sideline and over Dylan Stewart. There is an offside, as Brian said. Before that play, you know, one of the points on the financial game plan. Brian, one of your points on the principal financial game plan was sell out to stop the run. Before that King run of 17 yards, the Oklahoma State running backs had eight carries for 29 yards yep. against South Alabama. Yeah, I mean, so they did that last year. They kept, they kept Justice Hill to 11 carries for 27 yards in that game last year. Selling out to stop that run. He's selling out right here. And King, penetration. Yeah, King on first and five doesn't get anywhere close. Back to the line of scrimmage. Sean Greer from Green Cove Springs, Florida with a tackle for loss. Watch the penetration right here. Everybody gets into the backfield. Right from the backside there, Greer chased him down. They had front side penetration, and King goes backwards. Great player by Sean Greer chasing it. Experienced player for the Jaguars. He's came in starting 22 games in his career. Green Cove Springs, Florida. Jay Woods has to come out of the game. Sophomore corner from Pinson, Alabama, who had an interception last week. The loss was three yards. 
Second down and eight. Throwing Cornelius. Caught Dylan Stoner. Forward progress will get in the first down inside the South Alabama 40. That's a great throw by Caleb Cornelius. I mean, he just, I mean, he threw it from one hash all the way to the other side of the field to Stoner. It got there in a hurry. And they will snap it quickly. He fakes the handoff to King. And he put that right on the money to Dylan Stoner. And Stoner doesn't hang on. Watch this last throw, this time by Cornelius. You know, a juice on that throw to Stoner. The coverage was not bad by Ryan Mills. Chuba Hubbard is into the game at running back. Dylan Stoner didn't hang on to that bullet throw a moment ago from Taylor Cornelius, who is from Bushland, Texas. That's just west of Amarillo on Interstate 40. Cornelius will turn to hand the ball off. Chuba Hubbard down at the 37. So the deal with Taylor Cornelius was, Brian, he was 6'6", but only about 180 in high yeah. school and played every sport. So he wasn't in a summer seven-on-seven seven and camps and no. have a chance for, for, for coaches to see him in recruiting, Brian. Just outside of Amarillo. He was all-state in baseball, second baseman, all-state in basketball, all-state uh, ran track, and then, of course, in football. Four different sports he was all-state in. Wasn't recruited at the FBS level. Came to Oklahoma State as a walk-on. As a fifth-year senior. Now he's a starter, and he's tripped up as he tried to run it up the gut. Tyree Turner got him low. Knocked him off balance. Tyree Turner's made a couple of those plays now. He's just a fast-twitch athlete. Able to get that hand and rip the, the shoelaces off of Taylor Cornelius to get him down. Offense staying on the field on fourth down. It's at the 36, and they need a long six. Really need it all the way down to about the 29. Full seven yards probably needed here, and they're throwing for it. Right side, adjustment to the ball, and it's caught by Tylen Wallace. He has a touchdown catch tonight. He has a catch to sustain this drive on fourth down. Well, he's going to... Watch this. The ball is underthrown. So that Wallace can adjust to it. He comes back to it in the corner on the play. Travis Reed can't adjust. That's 20 yards down to the 16. And then it's swung out to the left side. Huh? And it's caught by Landon Wolf. And he's brought down to the open field by Tobias Moss. You know, Tobias Moss, he just laid out. That's what you want to see from your safety out there. He just laid out to get Wallace down and save the touchdown. I see great effort right now from South Alabama throughout this first half because Oklahoma State just substituted South Alabama will slow the pace down and substitute as well the play clock will go under 10 seconds a rarity second down to nine into the end zone and a marker is down flags fly in the end zone Jalen Thompson on the coverage of Tylen Wallace well, he was playing on his up shield, upfield shoulder. Cornelius was going for... Pass interference, defense number one. The penalty will place the ball at the two-yard line. Automatic first down. Wallace comes across, and you saw the left hand yeah. of Thompson grabbing Wallace right here. By rule, pass interference in the end zone, puts the ball at the two, first and goal. Jelani Woods was in motion. J.D. King with the ball and hit in the backfield. He does fight his way back to the line of scrimmage, but the penetration by Jordan Beaton really pays off. And Bull Barge, too, the linebacker. That's a good stop. We want to make Oklahoma State earn everything they can from Greg Stewart, the defensive coordinator there. He's got him a player in Bull Barge, a linebacker that Brian just noted. Second team preseason all Sun Belt Conference. Second down and goal. A throw into the end zone and looking to separate himself and make the catch. Incomplete going for a big cowboy back Jelani Woods. Well, Woods has a huge height advantage on Mills, about eight inches, eight or nine inches. And Mills just was scrappy. Just throwing, just throwing a jump ball right here to Jelani Woods. Woods tries to hold Mills off, but Mills was feisty. It's two good defensive plays in a row here by the Jaguars. Ryan Mills with the breakup as Jelani Woods was just trying to post him up. Yep. 
Third down and goal. Justice Hill now in a pistol formation. Chuba Hubbard is in the backfield. They faked it to Hubbard. They throw it to Hill. Hill in space. Alludes a tap draft. That is in. Justice Hill. Touchdown. Oklahoma State. Hey, this offense is all about putting the ball in the best playmaker's hands as the hands go back and forth here in Boone Pickens Stadium. A little swing pass to Justice Hill. Marker is down right now. Defense, 12 players in the formation. Five-yard penalty. Previous play is under review. Uh, the touchdown is under review? Huh. Because there was a penalty, no ball, the ball was not snapped. So it can be reviewed, but I'm not sure what they would review. It looked like Justice Hill yeah. took that swing pass and did a little dance into the end zone. Justice Hill had 16 touchdowns last year, one receiving, 15 rushing touchdowns. Had one touchdown last week in his 122-yard effort that included, Brian, a 92-yard run, which was not a touchdown, by the way. Well, you had a block on the outside, but there's Justice Hill beating the corner on the play, Jalen Thompson. Jalen Thompson's had a tough game missing tackles. Well, it's two or three. A, an elite athlete, you're trying to tackle in the open field. That's, that's hard on anybody. I don't see anything in that picture. We heard something about a targeting, and could it be on the block? I think there might be Tylen Wallace on, on the, the block. Yeah. Right here. Now they had one player ejected for targeting. After further review, there is no foul for targeting. The touchdown is good. All right. There was a targeting ejection for safety Kenneth Edison Magruder for Oklahoma State here early in the second quarter. There was a review, but it was just a good block to open up the edge for Justice Hill. And Hill is in for the score. Oklahoma State cashes in on another trip into the red zone. Four for four. Three touchdowns, one field goal. Matt Amendola's extra point extends the lead to 17 points. Biggest lead of the game for Oklahoma State. And again, here's how they have it with Hill scooting in to the end zone. College football on Fox is brought to you by Coyote. We dig dirt by Texas Department of Transportation. Don't mess with Texas means don't litter. And by Ford. Visit your local Ford dealer today and see why Ford is America's best-selling brand. There are 22 coaches, including two in the Big 12, Mike Gundy and Cliff Kingsbury, who coach at their alma maters. You saw some footage of Mike's days as the quarterback, but his days as the head coach have produced some wonderful times for Oklahoma State. 115 wins, three straight 10-win seasons. Mm -hmm. They're off to a 1-0 start and a 24-7 lead in game number two of 2018. And Mike uh, very much enjoyed Thursday night going to watch his son Gunner play. Yes. Yeah, got the big win against the school from, uh, from Norman. the town of Norman, Oklahoma. And quarterbacked by Barry Switzer's grandson, <laughs> Gunner so Gundy, with the performance for Stillwater to beat Norman North 44-21. Kickoff on the touchback. 24-7, second quarter, Oklahoma State leads South Alabama. We look at tonight's Mercy Health first half game summary with Oklahoma State leading South Alabama 24-7. Taylor Cornelius, 182 passing yards and a touchdown. Tyron Johnson, four catches for 105. Oklahoma State great in the red zone. South Alabama's long touchdown scored by Kawan Baker. His was from 12 yards out. He's carried the ball six times for 36 yards. After a score and then a kickoff for touchback, 
Jaguars the ball their own 25. Play fake deep throw. Evan Orth down the sideline and a diving attempt and a flag is down. Jordan yeah. McRae was the intended receiver. Coverage by A.J. Green, the junior corner from DeSoto, Texas, who had four picks last year, but they've got him for a pass interference call here, it looks like. Pass interference, defense number four. 15-yard penalty for the previous spot. Automatic first down. Well, you're just going to get a lot of right here on the outside. There's A.J. Green. He gets his hands on him. He doesn't look back for the ball. And so we're seeing these receivers now. That time, Jordan McRae. See the right hand of A.J. Green holding the jersey of McRae. So good call. Green and Rodarius Williams started every game at corner last year. Mike Gundy hopes they'll be better for it this year as Evan Orth keeps. And he's met by Calvin Bundich, who's been involved in a lot of plays on defense for Oklahoma State in this game. He holds Orth to a yard pickup. Well, Bundich is an experienced player. He's got tremendous speed and quickness, that combination. And he never comes off the field unless they're just, you know, looking to play some depth. But he'll play nearly every snap when the games get really important. Started nine games for the 10 and 3 Cowboys last year who beat Virginia Tech good in the throw. Camping World Bowl And it was a good throw and the receiver just does not hang on Kwan Baker Well, whatever the stats are right now for Evan Orth, they don't show Just how good he's throwing the football. I mean right here. This is how you stop and step and throw the football Just a frozen rope here to Baker The ball's right where it needs to be Now it's third down and about nine and a half. Fourth to throw behind the receiver. Jamarius Way. He's trying to throw a back shoulder to Jamarius Way as he comes back to get the ball. He was just a little bit off. But the protection was pretty good that time. There have been a couple of drops, Brian, as Evan Orth has four straight incompletions. Yeah. It is now eight for 15. Yeah, but I mean, he's, he's, he's had the drops you yep. mentioned. I mean, you can't throw the ball any better. Remember the fourth down play on a drive earlier. Line drive punt, but still a big leg from Corliss Waitman. It's rolling, and can South Alabama catch up to it? Did it carry him wow. into the end zone? No, he downed it. One yard line. Darian Mills was down, so was Davin Flanard, and I think it may have been Flanard who got down and jumped on it. Redshirt freshman receiver. Is it Flanard who catches up to yeah, the ball here 18. at the one? Yep. Lenord is a redshirt freshman wide receiver. He doesn't have a catch in his collegiate career yet, but he just made a huge play to down this punt at the one yard line. He sure does, and does a good job of making sure he's not in the end zone here when he downs the ball at the one. Best special teams play of the day for the Jaguars and puts Oklahoma State in bad field position. I was the Jaguars, I'd sell out, try to get a safety here. Here they come. But they jumped at a quick throw. And it's caught. That's Tylen Wallace up to the 15. They won't take the penalty. They'll take the play. Nice night for Tylen Wallace. Offside defense number 49. Penalty is declined. The result of the play is a first down. That should put him now, Brian, at three catches, 44 yards, and one touchdown, Tylen Wallace. Well, you're going to get this right up the middle here. Trying to time that snap. Trying to get to Taylor Cornelius. Five minutes left in the first half. Now breathing room. And again, it's Wallace. And he had both feet down, stayed in bounds, gained extra yardage after he stayed in bounds over the 30 to the 33. Watch Cornelius just throw this ball. It's so easy. He's got a great release. It's tight, it's quick, and it's accurate. I mean, if you wouldn't know any better, you wouldn't think this was his second college start. He's going to turn 23 years old next Sunday. You think this guy would have played a lot of football the way he throws it. 
He waits and goes to Dylan Stoner. Stoner in space, 40-yard line, bump down, 42. That Main time, nine. That time, Mark, he wanted to go deep. And South Alabama did a good job of taking it away, and he just checked it down to Stoner. That's the right play. Hands it off Justice Hill. Hill's in trouble. Hill is hit in the backfield. To his credit, he efforts back up to the 40-yard line. It's still a loss, but not as bad as it could have been. Oh, they got good penetration that time. Made Justice Hill change directions. Good penetration. And... Now it's a quick snap on third and three, and Cornelius throws. And it's in the direction of Wallace. And short hops him. I jinxed him. That was uh, an open Wallace that time, waiting for a first down throw, and he bounced it off the turf. That's a good stop that time for the Jaguars, as Mike Gundy is trying to probably come back and tell Cornelius that that wasn't the way you're supposed to throw it. That's not how you throw it in practice. Which is what he wants him to throw it yeah. as he does in practice and not try to be as he described. Oh, here's a fumble snap in the pot. They blocked the Matt Hockett punt because he couldn't snap, couldn't feel the snap cleanly. And after all of that, it is jumped on by South Alabama. It's like Jalen Bowie got it. Well, they had four men rushing the punter here. And this is just a drop. The, the ball was perfect. He took his eyes off it. And then four Jaguars are right there. And they come down with it. So really good special teams play and covering the kick and then blocking this punt. DJ Daniels with the block, and then Jalen Bowie picked up the ball. Remember that Zach Siner is yep. out after sports hernia surgery, their normal punter. It's Hockenden. Special teams play, block punt puts it at the 28-yard line of Oklahoma State. Motion, handoff, Kawan Baker. Baker waiting for a block to open up the edge. A little bit of an opening on the edge, and then Colby Peel. He's playing safety with Edison Magruder rejected for targeting. Peel the tackle, gain of around three. Baker looks like he just has a lot of different speeds. He was cruising there, and then he had the burst to pick up positive yards on that first down run. That time, Orth was under center taking the snap. He'd been in shotgun the entire game. Officially, that went for four yards. Orth to throw, a step for the receiver into the end zone, and he lays it right into the hands of Kawan Baker, second touchdown of the game for Baker. That was a big-time throw by Evan Orth. He put it in the perfect position for Baker. And look at South Alabama, winning the special teams, now winning this. Baker's just going to run the outside zone from the inside position right here. He beats Bernard cleanly, and the throw, though, was dropping in the bucket great by Evan Orth. From Bourbonnet, Illinois, Gavin Patterson and a high snap on the extra point, and that threw off the timing. And it is hooked wide left. Might have been Darian Daniels getting a little piece of it as well, but the bad snap sent things haywire for South Alabama. That starts with the snap, and any time the holder's got to jump up it, to be able to just put it down on the ground like that, it's going to throw off the timing. That's not going to stop Evan Orr from enjoying that moment. Remember, early in this game, he got flipped upside down. He had the bloody nose, and he looks like he's doing a good job of winning this, pos winning this quarterback position right here for good with throws like this. Baker with the second touchdown of the day, first touchdown catch. Had a way to look it all the way into his hand. Sure did. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that feels pretty good. A couple fourth quarter touchdowns last week for Worth. Engineering two touchdown drives here today. Cole Garvin from Newman, Georgia started at quarterback last week. Garvin has 15 games played 
over three seasons of action at South Alabama and 2,000 passing yards. But it is Evan Orth stepping in tonight in his first start and has engineered two scoring drives for South Alabama in the first half. Short kickoff, nine-yard line, Chuba Hubbard. Ooh, hit hard, 25-yard line. You could hear the hits. Yeah. And that is one happy player on special teams, Jake Hartwell. And uh, I'm sorry, Nick Mobley. Nick Mobley down on the hit on special teams. One of the two 46s on the roster for the Jaguars. Well, he's going to stay right on the field on defense. Take a listen to this here. Hmm. We used to call that just a good stick. You can hear it all the way up here. We're up on the roof at Boone Pickens Stadium. You can hear it all the way up here. And you can hear Nick Mobley, the redshirt freshman from Alabaster, Alabama, and how good he felt afterwards with the yell. And then nowhere to go for J.D. King. Might have gotten a yard off the left side on the run. Well, that's a Tyree Turner again, getting penetration inside. Making his 22nd start for South Alabama. Two and a half minutes remaining in the first half. King just ran the ball. The block on the edge. A throw to Tylen Wallace. And Wallace hanging on to him is Jalen Thompson, who's missed some tackles tonight, but hangs on. Wallace drags him to the 45. It's a first down. Now these corners are getting a workout out here. Anybody playing Oklahoma State knows what that's about. Back to throw, Cornelius flushed out of the pocket, rolling, looking, downfield, it opens up for him, and Dylan Stoner is there for the catch. Into South Alabama territory at the Jaguar 35, Tobias Moss pushed him out. Great job by Cornelius here, keeping his eyes down the field, even under pressure, to be able to find this receiver there. It is such a difficult skill to be able to find Stoner like that for a young quarterback, or a quarterback that's Friday's making a second start. Timeout, South Alabama. First time out of the half. This will be a 30-second timeout. Brian, it was an accurate throw, rolling and throwing off the back foot by Taylor Cornelius. Down to Dylan Stoner. Stoner has three grabs tonight. You know, we talked to Taylor Cornelius before the game, and we asked him if it's okay to call him Corn Dog because that's what his head coach called him in the meeting yesterday. His nickname for him, he said he doesn't really care. He's just enjoying playing football right now. After back, backing up Mason Rudolph, the third round pick, the Pittsburgh Steelers is. Now let's take a look at tonight's Coyote playbook and a little bit more here on Taylor Cornelius tonight, Brian, in his second start. Now let's take a look. Efficient here. On the move, this, this throw accurate. On the outside to Tyra Johnson, that one short pass, long run. But this touch throw on the outside here to, to Wallace. 16 of 23, 262 yards, one touchdown pass, and a lot of good throws on third and long, fourth down in this game. Well, and he's also, you know, look, this athletic ability, the ability to extend plays is every defense in the Big 12 is going to have to contend with his ability to extend. After the South Alabama timeout, and again, here's Cornelius showing some elusiveness. He rolls left, he throws deep, coming back for it, and sliding, going out of bounds, is Dylan Stoner. That's great effort by both players, by Cornelius and by Stoner, trying to keep that play alive. Here comes the spin. Eyes down the field again. Look at this throw. Didn't miss by much. Nope. Great effort by Stoner. Leading receiver in terms of receptions for Oklahoma State is Tylen Wallace. Leader in yards receiving is Tyron Johnson with 105. Draw. Delaying handoff. Looking for room is Hill. They have done a good job on Justice Hill tonight. On all the backs. Really containing it. They do a good job of just throwing their bodies into the running lanes. Only two runs for over five yards wow. for an Oklahoma State player tonight. Chuba Hubbard has an 18-yard run. J.D. King has a 17-yard run. That's Justice Hill's longest gain of five tonight. Justice Hill, five carries, 12 yards. Wow. Hill is in motion. 
Hill does have a touchdown reception. This is a slant throw to Tylen Wallace and caught down to the South Alabama 22. I always think those quick slants, like Cornelius just throw, are a great indicator of how accurate you are. And they go quickly in the last minute of the first half and out wide to the left. And off target, looking for Tyron Johnson. Taylor looking over to Mike Yersich, getting the play coming in. Chuba Hubbard in the backfield right now next to Cornelius. What Mike Gundy told us yesterday was that Corn Dog's a dinosaur because a lot of quarterbacks now won't stick around if they no. aren't playing. He said, I have so much respect for him. He stayed here and did everything we asked him to do. Now he's a starter. And here he is handing the ball up. And a blast up the middle by Chuba Hubbard. To the Jaguar 15. A gain of eight. 149 all-purpose yards last week in that win against Missouri State is the Jaguars have eight. Oh, that's yeah. Taji Stewart is Taji down Stewart, right now. Yeah. Plays that banded position that banded. on the defense, uh, the, the hybrid linebacker defensive end position. And they can put their hand down on the ground and rush the passer. We've seen some plays from Chris Henderson at that same position tonight. Here he is right here. Stewart has four tackles in this game, two tackles for loss. He had a sack last week. He's a junior from Marietta, Georgia. I like that. Greg Stewart out there checking on him. The defense corner has got to love the way that they've been able to contain this run here. They'd love to hold him to a field goal attempt right now. Got a good look at the new video board here at Boone Pickens Stadium in the background just a moment ago. It's one of the top 10 largest video boards in college football now. Eighth largest to be exact. Third down and two. Fake handoff. Dumped off in the flat. Behind the receiver, Justice Hill. He still caught it. And then he has a burst of speed inside the five. Markers down behind the plate. The passer, number eight on the defense. The penalty will be added to the end of the run. Half the distance for the goal. Automatic first down. We call that on bull guards at the end of the play, but I thought it was a pretty good tackle chasing him from behind. Oh, this is the same play that Justice Hill scored on. A little swing round on the outside, just trying to get him in space. He makes Nigel Lawrence miss right there. I thought it was a... Here's the hit. Oh, that play right there. Yeah. Bull Barge will push in the back of Cornelius. Out Oklahoma State. First time out this half. This will be a 30-second timeout. I thought Barge kind of pulled off on that hit. One very menacing. Nonetheless, they get a little closer. Every weekday morning, Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp go head-to-head -head on the day's hottest sports topics. Undisputed with Skip and Shannon, weekdays from 9.30 a.m. to noon Eastern, only on FS1. I'll tell you what isn't undisputed. It is the job that Mike Gundy has done here in Stillwater over the last 14 years. And it's a big transition when you lose Mason Rudolph, who started over 40 games, James Washington. A tremendous receiver here. Second and third round picks respectively by the Pittsburgh Steelers, Brian. Yeah. You may see James Washington this Sunday against the Cleveland Browns. But uh, Mike Gundy, you know, you got a transition. He's got some young quarterbacks that they're excited about. Spencer Sanders from Denton, Texas. But right now, Taylor Cornelius is doing a good job of grooming this next guy. Well, Mike Gundy is one of three coaches in the Big 12 who are the all-time leaders in coaching wins at their respective schools. Mike Gundy, Bill Snyder at Kansas State, who we will see next week whenever they play UTSA. Gary Patterson at TCU, who we saw last week with a big win over Southern and then a win last night over SMU to go to 2-0. His first and goal, final seconds of the half. Two-yard line, Justice Hill driving and gets in. Second and third effort for Justice Hill. He's not just a fast running back, he's a tough running back, and he's in for the Cowboys' touchdown. I thought it was a good surge up front. Larry Williams over there at left guard. 
Johnny Wilson at center. They stayed with it. And then Justice Hill just stayed behind the big uglies up front for a second touchdown of the day. To extend the lead to 18 points, Matt Amendola's extra point, 21 seconds left in the half. 31 13. Last year it was 44 7 whenever Mike Gundy and Oklahoma State went to Mobile and beat South Alabama. As we look at the Baldy breakdown on this score. Wow, you're going to see really, really good penetration right here. They get him blocked. Bull Barge at the top. He gets blocked that time by Jelani Woods, the young redshirt freshman cowboy back. Justice Hill sticks right behind him. Makes Barge miss right in the hole number eight there. Stays behind Woods and Wainwright. Hambright right there at left tackle. You Offensive meant? linemen feel like they got a chance to score right there. Brian, you mentioned the left guard, Larry Williams. He and Marcus Keyes and Shane Richards are a three guard rotation on the offensive line. Keyes and Williams splitting time at left guard, even though Keyes has started 26 games over the last two years. But Williams, a transfer from East Carolina, has starting experience himself. Tonight is his 10th start, and he was part of plowing the road for Justice Hill. Kickoff, 21 seconds left in the half. It's booted by Jake McClure into the end zone. Well, certainly more good than bad for Oklahoma State and Mike Gundy and some good and some bad mixed together for Steve Campbell and South Alabama in the opening half hour of the game. I think Steve Campbell will, will go in at halftime and he'll uh, he'll take a look at the first half action, but I think he'll love the effort that his team is playing with. And, you know, for his second coaching start here for South Alabama, a job that he always had his eyes on, from the Panhandle of Florida, not far from Mobile. Yep. I think uh, this was a, a good learning experience here in the first half. A lot of good things from his Jaguars. Play of game, offense, number 14, five yard penalty, so first down. Been a couple of those penalties tonight. Now six penalties on South Alabama in the first half. He wants to make sure it doesn't happen again. <laughs> get up and get ready. Get set. He's a delightful guy to talk to, but coaches don't like seeing mistakes like that. And you can see the frustration as the slant throw goes to Jamarius Wade. Yeah, I like the fact that with 21 seconds to go, he threw it. Just staying aggressive. I mean, it would be easy just to take a knee and go to the locker room, but try to make another play. Try to get better on another play. He said that's the motto. That is the end of the first half. It is a first half that's seen Oklahoma State generate 319 yards of offense and 31 points. Justice Hill has two of the four touchdowns that Oklahoma State scored in the first half. Cowboys came in after a 41-point win last week over Missouri State. They have an 18-point halftime lead at home against South Alabama. Leslie McCaslin now on the field with Cowboys head coach Mike Gundy. Thanks. Well, coach, I know you don't like mistakes like that, but do you like the way your guys responded and got the touchdown before halftime? Yeah, offensively, we were slow early a little bit, and then defensively, we've gotten lackadaisical, made a poor move on uh, on the punt, put the ball on the ground, and then let a guy run by us. I'm not real fired up about that. And then we're not fielding the punts. we got to come catch punts. And so we haven't been very good on special teams, and that concerns me. We've got to improve in that area. But we're hitting some pros. They're playing a lot of guys up there to stop the run, so we have to throw the ball down the field. You said you wanted Taylor to loosen up a little bit in this one. What have you seen from him so far? He's been fine. He's done He's done uh, uh, much better in this game than he did the last game. All right. Thanks, Coach. Well, Taylor Cornelius is thrown for 281 yards, and he's completed 67% of his passes. Nothing shabby about what he's done in the first half. It's 31-13 after the break. We go to L.A. for the FS1 College Football Halftime Show with Rob Stone, Robert Smith, Matt Leiter, and Dave Wanstead. Football on 
Fox is sponsored by Saltgrass Steakhouse. 31-13, Oklahoma State Cowboys at home lead the South Alabama Jaguars. The third quarter will start in just a moment. But before it does, we have a Baldi's breakdown from a touchdown run by Justice Hill in the first half. Well, here's a swing pass to Hill, but he's going to get a great block by Tylen Wallace on the inside linebacker right here. It's going to be a deep leader. It's a legal hit, shoulder to shoulder, knocks him off his feet, eliminates a defender, and now all Justice Hill has to do is beat one defender on the outside for a second touchdown of the first half. 31-13, the lead for Oklahoma State. Let's hear about the South Alabama perspective. Leslie McCaslin down on the sideline. Leslie. Well, guys, I just caught up with Steve Campbell, who said his guys are playing hard. But he said on defense, yeah, they're loading the box and stopping the run, but they've got to do a better job tackling. On offense, he said he will stick with Evan Worth to start the second half. But he said, you know, offensively, we're just leaving too many plays out there. So that's something that they really want to work on here. They know they're moving the ball. Evan Worth is doing a great job, but they just feel like there's a lot more they can do, guys. I said, you got to be pleased with the way they played in the first half. He said, well, they're playing hard, Mark. And Leslie McCaslin playing hard, yeah. as always. Yes, she is. Uh, you know, and I'm a big Steve Campbell fan. I think we both are. We, yeah. we saw him a couple years ago at Central Arkansas when he was there. Uh, highly competitive guy. We saw him against Texas Tech, have a great effort. His kids play hard. That's always a good sign of a coach. But the plays he's talking about, drop passes, yeah. opportunities to move the sticks, stay on the field, keep the defense off. Those are plays he knows that they can correct here in the second half. He told us this week, and you alluded to this earlier, Brian, I like coaching kids that need football. I needed football. Don't know how I would have gone to college without it. Because of football, my son and daughter have been to college and have degrees. Football helped us get there. It's a good Thank dude. Kickoff to the six-yard line. Chuba Hubbard. Up to the 28 on the return. Taylor Cornelius threw for 300 yards in his first start last week against Missouri State. He already is at 281 after a half of play tonight and a great completion percentage, 18 to 27. Yeah, two-thirds of his passes have been completed. He's had a couple drops as well. And he's avoided the mistakes tonight. Last night through the or last week he threw the one interception in the end zone against Missouri State. He has stayed away from those throws tonight. And running back Justice Hill. There's not much there. You see a lot of white shirts just plugging it. That man right there, Tyree Turner, we've talked about him a lot. He just has an ability to get into the, the cracks between the offensive linemen and penetrate. He never looks tired to me either, even though he plays a lot of snaps. Stockbridge, Georgia, junior Tyree Turner. Seven tackles against Louisiana Tech in the opener last week. Had a sack. He had three and a half quarterback sacks last season. Cornelius, his 28th throw of the game. Is it the prettiest looking throw? And it was caught, though, at the 40 yard line by Tylen Wallace. Another First down. Another throw here by Cornelius outside the pocket. Good protection. Some guys just have a knack to throw it on the run. He seems as accurate on the run as he is standing in the pocket. Several examples of that tonight. Now he'll stand back and he'll throw it deep down the left side. And it's an interception. It is picked up by Tobias Moss. He had two last year. And Moss with an interception a minute and a second into the third quarter. And he left that ball short. And Tobias Moss playing tight man coverage was able to come up with the, with the ball. He, Cornelius, he just hung that ball up there. He's got the belt too. <laughs> I guess you're going to see this ball on the outside. Moss is just going to stay with the inside receiver here. He does a good job of turning back for the ball. I'm not sure how he, I think he caught that one-handed. I think it was just a one-handed kick. Look at that. Oh, that oh, ball hit. They, they got to they get that review. That ball hit the ground. Stoner touched it once. Oh, yeah. That, he cradled it, but this Throwing should get reviewed. With interception. The previous play is under review. Let's see if this ball... Right there, touches the ground. Now, did he? It looked. Didn't look like he had possession as it touched the ground either. Yeah, didn't have it. 
Did he have it stabilized up yeah. against his body with that one hand? Well, they're all looking at this huge Dactronics video screen here. Yes. <laughs> it is a beautiful picture. One of the top 10 largest screens in America. So they're all looking up at it. You know, of course, if you're the home team, you want it to work for you. And they want to show that this ball right here by Tobias Moss touches the ground right there. Although well, he does it. There's another angle. That angle, it looks like it did touch the ground. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that angle looked like it never touched the grass. Look at them, they're all looking up there. <laughs> Which is the definitive angle right here for Ken Williamson? Moss is pleading his case. Again, Moss had two interceptions last season. He's a junior from Miami. Shoot. That's a tough call here. I think at first glance we thought it was going to be a pretty easy I, call, but I, you know, I think you're right that there's another angle. I'm just curious. Like, they're looking at the, the little iPad there, but really they should be looking up at the screen. <laughs> I mean, the screen's the a eighth much largest, better shot. It's yeah. the eighth largest board. Why look at the little screen? Look at the big screen. After further review, the ring on the field stands. Interception, first down. That last shot that we showed, it didn't look like Tobias Moss allowed the ball to hit. They preach takeaways at South Alabama, and they get the belt when they get the takeaway. They're a plus one now on the yeah. year in takeaways. They forced five. They committed four last week. South Alabama down by 18 with the ball early third quarter on the Tobias Moss interception starting from their own 29 when Trey Minter has tried to run the ball between the tackles there has been next to nothing in terms of room he just squeezes into the middle for two yards there a whole bunch of black shirts in the middle and if you want to be a, a great defense you've got an answer after your offense turns it over and get the ball back. I'm sure that was the message by Jim Knowles, the new defensive coordinator here at the Cowboys. They play a 4-2-5 defense with Jim Knowles in his first year as defensive coordinator. Evan Orth, the pass to the sideline, short of the first down, but it is caught by Jamarius Way. Two yards shy of the first down, A.J. Green from DeSoto, Texas on the tackle. Good protection that time for Evan Orth, allowing right here Way to, to work that one-on-one -on -one against A.J. Green. It's a good matchup. Pass goes for six yards. Look how tight A.J. Green is up here at the top. South Alabama, three for eight on third downs. They need two yards here. Orth to throw, and it's another drop, and it's almost intercepted. That is three receivers who have dropped balls that have hit them right in the hands and the chest. That time it's tight end Collier Smith from Birmingham. Well, that was just a drag slide concept, allowing Orth to get outside the pocket looking for a crossing route, and he does. Right in the tight end, hit him right in the right spot. He dropped it before he got hit. That's about, I count about five drops right now by these guys. Letting them, the mistake he made by Smith was allowing the ball to come all the way into his body. He should have his hands out, just grabbing the ball away from his body. The big leg of Corliss Waitman from Milton, Florida, the top punter in the Sun Belt last year. Fair catch, Dylan Stoner. And Oklahoma State's defense forces a three and out after the South Alabama interception. College football on Fox is brought to you by Mercy. Your life is our work. By Bud Light, game day's favorite light logger. And by Rib Crib, smoke it, the good stuff. It doesn't get much better when your university has produced running backs like Thurman Thomas and Barry Sanders. Justice Hill led the Big 12 in rushing last season, 1,467 yards. But last year against South Alabama and tonight against the Jaguars have been the three most difficult halves of football he's played statistically. Justice Hill has averaged over 100 yards rushing a game in the 25 other games that he's played. Catch Jalen McCleskey. 
Bucks second grab tonight for McCluskey gains seven yards on first down. McCluskey's been a little quiet tonight. But a big night for Tyler Wallace and Tyron Johnson. McCluskey had six catches in the opener. Second down and three. Cornelius, a deep ball. Looking it all the way in, it's caught Tylen Wallace, even with Jalen Thompson all over. Flag came in at the end of the play, but Tylen Wallace continues to stack onto his best performance of his young career in Stillwater. Jumped right over Jalen Thompson to snag that ball away. Two fouls on the play, offside defense, number 22. Pass interference defense. Both those fouls are declined. Result in play. First down. Well, this throw down the right sideline here. It's a free play because of the offsides. And look at that hang time. By Tylen Wallace taking over for James Washington. 33 yards. Flags have come in again when Cornelius was flushed out of the pocket. And ran it up to the 36. We'll see if that five yard scramble stands. Doesn't look like it will. He plays with a lot of poise, though, when he gets outside the Personal pocket. Personal foul, hands to the face, offense number 51. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat first down. From Ypsilanti, Michigan, Arlington Hambright. Well, Hambright's the, the left tackle. So here he is on the outside. There's the hands to the face, right underneath the throat. He didn't get him off there. So, good flag. Tough spot there by the left tackle. The edge rusher, Chasen Milner from Spanish Fort, Alabama, was the player that Hambright was trying to block. It's first to 25. A little step up by Cornelius. Down the middle on a long bomb and broken up. Thompson keeps it away from Tylen Wallace, who is at eight grabs for 133 yards in the game. It's a good job by Jalen Thompson coming back after the pass interference call and making this defense right here. Corndog does a good job of stepping up into that pocket to make this throw. That's right where he belongs. And he gave his receiver a good chance to go get it. Hands to the face penalty is why this is second down and 25. Backing up under pressure, Cornelius. This will be intentional grounding, it would appear. Yep. Yeah. He Jordan just, Beaton got him, Brian. Ken Williamson just threw the flag late. Potential grounding, offense number 14. The penalty is lost and down the spot of the foul. Third down. It was originally a screen. He was buying some time, and they really did a good job of jumping the screen, taking it away, and then Taylor tried to extend the play. The play is, is going over here to the screen. They take it away. Now he's... Now he's just dumping the ball to get rid of it, save the sack. And that's why there was intentional grounding. So it was a bad series for Oklahoma State. Mike Yersich is an outstanding offensive coordinator, but what can you do on third and 44? Justice Hill, best run of the game. But it still leaves them a long, long, long way away. That's Grayer who's had a good game as well. Sean Grayer, the left end. These guys, I think, who have played a lot of snaps on both sides of the ball tonight are lucky that we get temperatures that are fairly cool here in early September in Stillwater. Oklahoma State has run 56 plays tonight. South Alabama has run 41 plays so far in this game, which is early in the third quarter. Hill just ran for 15 yards, but it still leaves the Cowboys with fourth and 29. You can start your day with First Things First. Join Chris Carter, Nick Wright, and Jenna Wolf for the best sports show on television. Weekday morning, 6.30 Eastern on FS1. Remember tonight, Matt Hockett dropped a snap on a punt, and then that left him in virtually no position to get the punt away. It was blocked by D.J. Daniels. Picked up by Jalen Bowie. Rush on this punt. Hockett fielded the snap cleanly. And got a lot of leg into this one. Driving Minter all the way back to the 12. 
six yard return up to the 18. That's where South Alabama will start their second series of the third quarter. Oklahoma State leading 31 13. This is Fox College Football. College Football on Fox is brought to you by Ford. Visit your local Ford dealer today and see why Ford is America's best selling brand. By Oklahoma Farm Bureau Insurance with agents in all 77 counties. Now that's you. And by Saltgrass Steakhouse. Experience a cut above with certified Angus beef brand steak. From Boone Pickens Stadium in Stillwater, Oklahoma State, they ranked 23rd in the coaches poll. There are two spots out of the Associated Press poll going into the second weekend of the season. They are hosting South Alabama. They lead the Jaguars by 18. From their own 17, South Alabama snaps the ball. Juan Baker runs. There's a flag down at the point of the tackle. Malcolm Rodriguez is the player who made the tackle. Now Baker was the leading rusher in his game at the half. On a lot of plays just like that. 40 yards, seven carries. They're rushing for Kawan Baker. He's listed as a wide receiver. Holding offense number 24. 10 yard penalty. After this is the goal. Excuse me. First down. Deontay Moore running back from way up north in Alabama from Owens Crossroads. <laughs> a couple stoplights there, maybe. They uh, they only need three digits, I believe, to yeah. uh, to list the population. <laughs> Anyways, that play really put South Alabama in a hole here. Yeah, back to the eight, Brian, on the half the distance to the goal penalty. Trey Minter is in the backfield, and he'll receive the little flip out to the left side to the corner. Beat Colby Peel on the corner, but then a lot of other black shirts are waiting for him around the 15-yard line. 14 is officially where he goes out. Yeah, they've had some success with that. Just it's not really worth it trying to run inside on Oklahoma State. So they've done a lot of sweeps and quick screens to the outside, just trying to get to the perimeter, and maybe make somebody miss in a tackle out there. We were talking during the break. South Alabama is a touchdown away from really being in this game in the second half on the road against a power five team they only have one power five win the question is as they throw it out to the right side and it's caught but nothing after the catch for the receiver for McCray Jordan McCray AJ Green on the tackle can they sustain a drive the drive they need to get them to within uh, 10 or 11 points depending on what Steve Campbell would do after a touchdown but there's so many obstacles in front of them by the way the only power five win was against mississippi state to open 2016 for south alabama there must have been some celebration in mobile after that win 21 20 came back to win it scored the last 14 points of the game mississippi state a great showing in manhattan kansas day against the wildcats 131 to 10. Comes a blitz. Evan Orr throws, and it's picked off. It's an interception. It's a run back to the 20, to the 10, and he is in the end zone. It's a touchdown. Devin Harper. Now Steve Campbell's team have avoided the big mistakes to that throw by Orr. I don't think he ever saw Devin Harper right in the passing lane. They never saw him. He was going on the cross to Sam Harris and never saw Harper. Last season, Justin Phillips had a pick six against South Alabama for Oklahoma State. This year, it is Devin Harper who has one. Phillips' pick six was 25 yards last year. This one, 24 for Harper to extend the lead to 25 points. Knoxville, Tennessee, Devin Harper just scored a defensive touchdown on a pick six of 24 yards. Going into today, since 2010, Oklahoma State has 42 non-offensive touchdowns, now 43, one of the best in the country. Over the last eight seasons, yep. scoring touchdowns without their offense on the field. Yep, and uh, to credit here to what they've had before and now what Jim Knowles will do going forward. 
Glenn Spencer, the previous defensive coordinator. A lot of those have been in the return game as well. Big hole in the kickoff for Trey Mentor. And it was Jake McClure coming up after kicking off and making the tackle just outside the 35. Here's tonight's OGNE play of the game as the pick six a moment ago. Well, right here is Devin Harper. He's here. And he's going to drop on the play into a zone right here. And his eyes are going to be right back looking at Evan Orth. He's going to be right in the passing lane. Orth doesn't see him. Harper picks it off, picks up a convoy, takes it to the house for the first defensive score of the night for Oklahoma State. That's the OG&E play of the game. Timeout, Oklahoma State, first timeout of the half. A defensive timeout taken before South Alabama's first snap after a quality kickoff return by Trey Minter. It's odd. Odd not to have your defense ready and set after that kickoff coverage. Kenny Edenfield, the offensive coordinator of the Jaguars, teaming up with Steve Campbell. About the third time they've, they've coached together at different stops. All played together on a national championship team at Troy State back in 1987. When we talked to Steve Campbell this week about his vision for South Alabama, this is his first FBS head coaching job. He said, what Central Florida did, South Alabama should be able to do. Yes. The sky's the limit. Great administration behind all things athletic and academic, including clearing ground for an on-campus stadium. Here is an option. Evan Orth hit at the line, pays the price to pick up a yard two at best to follow up on that steve told us this week brian we have a long way to go and a lot of work to do but there's no reason south alabama can't be a central florida yep. or a boise boise who comes into stillwater by the way next week sure and he used those uh, examples as programs they've got a stadium underway on campus they've got an indoor facility for the first time in 10 years that they just opened up this year and an orth on a second interception Inside position by A.J. Green, and much like Devin Harper had a convoy of blockers, Green does as well. He's broken a couple of tackles, and he finally goes down at the South Alabama 24. Well, A.J. Green is an NFL caliber corner. He's got the size at 6'1". He's got the ball skills. He had four interceptions last year. He gets his first this year. There is a marker down, by the way. Oh, this great coverage right here. He jumps the route, gets inside of Jalen Tolbert to take that ball away. Prior to the interception, holding against an eligible receiver, number four of the defense. The penalty is 10 yards the previous spot and includes an automatic first down. Well, Brian, it was poised to be two interceptions thrown in three plays from scrimmage for Evan North and South Alabama, and they just got a huge lifeline. Yeah. That call against A.J. Green on the outside, I didn't see it. He doesn't believe it. I thought he did a great job of cutting around, getting inside of Tolbert. There's the press man coverage looking right at the belt buckle. I didn't see it. I mean, I don't know. He just hand checked him, which is fine in the first. But South Alabama gets a break. Penalty advances them up to their own 49. Mentor to the outside. Hit in the backfield, fights his way back to the line of scrimmage. Calvin Bundage all over the field, inside and out for the Cowboy defense. That Trey Minner is going to be sore tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, they, these uh, training rooms, they all have these ice baths. He's going to spend some time in an ice bath tomorrow because he's going to have some bumps and bruises the way this Cowboy defense has hit him today. A lot of them from that man right there, Calvin Bundage. Last week, it was tough sledding when he ran it 16 times and gained it 23 yards. Tonight, Minter has eight carries, one yard. His longest run is two yards tonight. The holes, needless to say, have not been there for Trey Minter last week nor this week. Now, it's a young and inexperienced offensive line. Play of game, offense, number 14. Five-yard penalty, remains second down. That's three times tonight, delay of yeah, game. But I think Steve Campbell's got a legitimate gripe here. I mean, they they just held the snap to allow Oklahoma State to substitute. Yes. And they didn't really even 
let the referee back all the way up before they blew the whistle. The free snap penalty serves a team that is struggling to sustain offense like that. Spin move, Deontay Moore. To the 47, he gained three. These holes close fast. There, there looked like there was a hole. And then right there, Moniki closed it real quickly. Tabo Moniki is from Denton, Texas. Went to Geyer High School. Had the interception in a game against Baylor last year. And one of the three safeties that start for Jim Knowles and his defense. Third and 13. And Oklahoma State sitting dead red on that sweep, and Bundage was there again. Bundage, he came right off the corner. It's just speed is too fast at the snap. Here he is right here. I mean, he wasn't fooled by any backfield action, just penetrated. I don't think Steve Campbell is real happy about that delay a game penalty a couple plays before. 31% on third downs last season for South Alabama. Three for 13 last week, three for 11 on third down tonight. Good on. Wow. Wow. Corliss Waitman, that's why he's one of the best in the country. He's on the Ray Guy Award watch list. He was first team all Sun Belt last year, preseason first team all Sun Belt this year. He has got a cannon of a leg when he connects like he just did. And he can foul leaping on the receiving team. The penalty is 15 yards in the previous spot. Automatic first down. Wow. Wow. So that is a new rule this year. Let's see right here is what they're talking about. Or maybe it was. The call two guys that went. I don't know if Jelani Woods was the other one, 87. I thought they were just trying to go block the ball, uh, block the punt. Five penalty first downs in the game now for South Alabama. Five times a penalty committed by the Oklahoma State Cowboys have moved the chains for the Jaguars. Well, they better get a clearing. I mean, Mike Gundy's got to get an understanding of that rule going forward because a lot of teams protect just like South Alabama did and if you are not allowed to leap over a guy to try and block the punt then they got to change their style right now first time in the game that Cephas Johnson redshirt freshman from Davidson High School in Mobile will play tonight he threw one pass last week and Steve Campbell said in the aftermath of playing three quarterbacks last week we didn't give Cephas Johnson enough of a look we saw him down on the field he's from Mobile big school in Mobile he's a good looking athlete tall rangy athletic redshirt freshman 65 to 25 and arm. here is the arm and he is going for the home run and just too far in front of Jameer Taylor well, that's a different style of football, throwing the ball down the field like that. See if it's just got to just calm himself down a little bit. That's the right read. There's Wolf on the, on the, uh, Taylor on the break. Gets right behind A.J. Green. Runs right by him. That was Kenny Edenfield right here. I can come back and dial that up right again. Well, he'll need something big play-wise on third down and eight. Cephas Johnson is flushed from the pocket. And Colby Peel read it all the way. Peel didn't concede any ground and just forced him out around the line of scrimmage. There's Evan Orth who started tonight and had played the distance until this moment, middle of the third quarter, when Cephas Johnson came in. Yeah, well, I thought he's played well, except for the last throw intercepted by Devin Harper. Cephas Johnson coming in after a leaping penalty that was called on Logan Carter on a punt to stay in the drive. So we'll see Corliss Waitman back out there again. Don't know if that was trouble with the snap or thinking about a fake, but the punt is away and it's not easily fielded, but it is fielded nonetheless by Dylan Stoner. Down to the 12 yard line with 521 to go in the third quarter. Cowboys up 38 13.
Milo Wallace, sophomore receiver for Oklahoma State. Brian, more catches and yards receiving tonight than he had all of last season. He's had some night. And it's been down the field. It's been one-on-ones, leaping over good cornerbacks here from South Alabama, taking the ball away from them. You know, somebody has to replace James Washington, who was one of the great receivers in college football and one of the great receivers in the history of Oklahoma State. Looks like he's doing a good job taking that spot right now. From South Hills High School in Fort Worth, Texas, Tylen Wallace had seven for 118 last year. Eight for 133 tonight. Here's a throw on the run, and Cornelius again showing he can roll and throw. He fights Tyron Johnson, and this play will go all the way from the 12 up to the 44. That's 32 yards before Sterling Fisher hauls down Tyron Johnson, who's also having a great night at receiver for the Cowboys as we head down to Leslie McCaslin. Well, guys, a funny moment over here on the Oklahoma State sideline when wide receiver Jalen McCleskey looked at his running backs and said, hey, guys, where y'all at? And then he started listing off their stats from last week. J.D. King looked at one of them and said, um, I'm working out here too, guys. But uh, pretty funny when you look at the fact that Oklahoma State only has 37 yards rushing tonight. McCluskey has a point. Yeah, they had 431 yards rushing last week, the second most in the Mike Gundy era. But uh, I'll, I'll give... Uh, Tylen Wallace and Jalen McCleskey a little help here listing off the numbers. Wallace, we just showed eight for 133, and now Johnson after that grabbed Bryant five for 137. Yeah, well, you know, they're going to stack the box and take all kinds of chances to shut down Chuba Hubbard in the picture there or Justice Hill or J.D. King, then the receivers got to be able to win on the one-on-ones on the outside, and they've been able to do that. And quite frankly, the game this year is following a very similar pattern to the game last yeah, year in terms much. of what South Alabama took away and what Oklahoma State was still able to do. There's Flag down again. And that's going to be pass interference on Jalen Thompson battling on the outside. Wallace, yeah. yeah. interference defense number one 15 yard penalty from the previous spot automatic first down ninth penalty tonight Brian for South Alabama well I mean he's he's battling he's looking back for the ball he's not bad right there but I thought he's just arm barred him and just try to keep him off him I would say just stay aggressive out there Jalen you know the ball's going down the field to these receivers Right now, it's kept by the quarterback, Cornelius, to the outside. And the big quarterback showing off the athleticism. He will rumble down inside the 10. It's first and goal. How about the stiff arm by Taylor Cornelius to get turned a corner on that play? We saw a 32-yard run from him a week ago. Right up the middle, this one was around the outside. Sneaky fast from the 6'5 redshirt scene. Seven-yard line, first and goal. Cornelius flushed with a pocket. Oh, oh throws an interception in the end zone. Wow. It's picked off in the end zone by linebacker Bull Barge. Well, he made the same throw last week. An interception in the end zone against Missouri State. That's the one bad throw here tonight. It's the Here's second interception. Bull Barge right here. His eyes are right at Taylor Cornelius. Zone coverage. He gets his drop. Great play by Bull Barge. He really tried to force that ball into Tyron Johnson. It's a really good catch by a linebacker, Brian. Yeah, I mean, he went high to get it. But, you know, he had the interception last week in the end zone. Killed the drive and does this week. And another takeaway here for South Alabama. They had three last week. Get another one here tonight. After three plays of quarterback, Cephas Johnson is out, and Evan Orth is back. And Orth going down the right sideline incomplete. 38-13 Oklahoma State, late third quarter. When you think about this, uh, South Alabama's defense here has shut Oklahoma State out here in this third quarter. And the only points to pick six by Devin Harper oh for the God. Cowboys. <laughs> That's a good feeling. Stopping a drive, interception in the end zone. Making an athletic play like Bobards just did. Or throws, and it's caught. And then Jordan McRae stepped out of bounds. 
They've got three really good receivers here at South Alabama. Jordan McRae is one of them. Jamarius Way, Kwan Baker. And Baker is a threat in Steve Campbell's offense to run the football just as much as he is to catch it. Yep. As a matter of fact, he has touchdowns both ways tonight and had touchdowns both ways last week. They're down at four. Off target for Deontay Moore as a safety valve option in the flat. He'd like to have that throw back. He had Moore on the outside, exactly what they wanted. Just try to get him out in the flat. Try to pick up four yards out there, and they had it. The throw was accurate. Three and out after the turnover. Bull Barge, the linebacker, with the interception. This punter, though, has been a big story of the evening for South Alabama. This is his sixth punt of the game. Caught by Dylan Stoner at the 35, 34-yard line officially. Oklahoma State's offense comes back out on the field. Mason Rudolph is gone after being the Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award winner last year, the all-time leading passer in Oklahoma State history, and a third-round pick of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And he's got James Washington with him in Pittsburgh and all of the accolades oh, he had they, in Oklahoma State. They hooked up in preseason together on a couple touchdown throws, and Mason Rudolph beat out Landry Jones for the backup quarterback job to Ben Roethlisberger. And so now it is Taylor Cornelius and a duo of Tylen Wallace and Tylen Johnson trying to replace James Washington at receiver based on how it's unfolding tonight. That's a run by L.D. Brown, who had 110 on the ground last week. Wow. Grabbing at his right leg right now. Grabbing that right ankle. He can barely get up off the ground. He had over 100 yards on just nine carries last week. He breaks a lot of tackles. Ran right through three of them in that play. Had that ankle trapped underneath at the end of that tackle. Had a nice run there for 14 yards. L.D. Brown is out. J.D. King is in. Protection for Taylor Cornelius gives him time to go deep down the field to Cowboy back Jelani Woods. Woods with the grab. Mike Gundy is very high on him. As he should be. Yep. What a target he is. He's the biggest tight end cowboy back I've seen in the country so far this year. He's every bit of six, seven, maybe six foot eight. And athletic. In the backfield, JD King was wrapped up by Sean Grayer. Fights back to the line of scrimmage if that. Well, here he is on this play. Trying to going down the field on that post route you know the Cowboys back that graduated a year ago Blake Jarwin is now a member of the Dallas Cowboys as they yes, get sir. ready for NFL opening weekend tomorrow and I'm sure that Mike Gundy has pointed that out to Jelani Woods like that is a possibility if you just keep growing developing and maturing A running play again right back to the line of scrimmage for Justice Hill. Marcus Keyes, the left guard in the middle of a little fracas. Marcus Keyes, a preseason all Big 12 guard. In a rotation right now, he'd like to get that job back full time. He and Larry Williams both play on the left side of the line at guard. Between Johnny Wilson from yep. Midland, Texas, the center who had 10 starts last year. And the left tackle, Arlington Hambright. Third and ten. Cornelius for the end zone. And two or three yards too far past. Wow. Justice Hill. Justice Hill was open for maybe the hat trick. Got behind the defender. Just a straight seam route. Got behind Bull Barge. Just put a little too much on it. Bull Barge did well to secure that interception on the last drive. But he's in a tough spot as a linebacker trying to stay with Justice Hill down the middle. 
looking to make it 14 straight field goals. Last year's Big 12 scoring leader, Matt Amendola. And he does make it 14 in a row. He hit from 45 earlier tonight and from 37 to extend the lead to 41-13 with a buck 44 to play third quarter at Boone Pickens Stadium in Stillwater. Pistol Pete's happy. Yeah. Taylor Cornelius engineers another scoring drive. Five touchdowns, four on offense, and a couple of field goals for the Cowboys tonight. These are the Southwest Airlines Big 12 Players of the Week from opening week. That includes Chuba Hubbard of Oklahoma State, Brian Coe, newcomer of yeah. the week. Of course, Will Greer went into Rocky Top there in Tennessee and had a great day. And we saw Darius Davis, the true freshman for TCU last week, have a great outing along with uh, Curtis Bolton there, the defensive Big 12 Player of the Week for Oklahoma. As they took care of business today against UCLA in a commanding way. Don't forget Isaiah Zuber from Kansas State, the special yep. teams player of the sure. week. If he doesn't do what he does last week, the yep. Kansas State falls to an FCS school. Or likely does anyway. They had to come back and win. Yeah. Too many penalties for Kansas State last week. Too many this afternoon against Mississippi State. Here's Jake McClure's kickoff. At the 25 is worth South Alabama will start with 144 to play in the third quarter. Six play 46 yard scoring drive. Matt Amendola's 37 yard field goal ends it. Taylor Cornelius in his first start last week threw for 300 yards. He is now flirting with 400 yards tonight. 395 is where he sits here in the dying minutes of the third quarter. Well, they get Boise State coming in next week. The opponents will get tougher and tougher yep. as they start getting ready for conference play in two weeks. Boise State ranked 20th in the nation going into play this week. Drop pass. Coming to the inside was Messiah Francis as Cephas Johnson is back in at quarterback for the second series that he's played tonight. And it's an incompletion to start the drive. There's Evan Orth who started and has played most of the snaps tonight. And played pretty tough and pretty, pretty well throughout the evening. For Cephas Johnson, they really need to just try to get him some completions here. That was a, a little screen pass that was dropped, but that's what they're trying to get here. Has thrown three passes in two games, and they've all been incomplete. That was an inside run by Maurice Mayo for the Jaguars. Oklahoma State, a lot of depth inside on that defensive line. You have to have it in the Big 12, as many snaps as the defenses face against these high-octane offenses in the Big 12. Mike Scott is one of... Arguably 10 or 11 deep they go on the defensive line who just made that tackle as a matter of fact He's listed as the third Defensive end behind Brock Martin and Jordan Brailford Got three seniors starting up front for him back to throw Cephas Johnson low Again looking for the tight end Francis Cephas just needs to calm, you know, just kind of relax here a little bit. He's getting a chance to play. It's a big stage. It hasn't been in front of a crowd like this on the road. Just needs to relax, and I'm sure that's exactly what Kenny Enfield is telling him. And that's what the offensive linemen are saying right there. Ryan Alexander, the right tackle. Another big leg punt by Corliss Waitman. Dylan Stone has spun away from one tackle, and then South Alabama, they blocked themselves out of a potential tackle, and Stoner is able to use that to open that return up to the 40-yard line. He did. And you're going to see two Jaguars run into each other, knock each other off. There it is. And Stoner, with tremendous speed, gets to the corner. From yeah. Jinx. Yeah. Great program in Oklahoma. Won't surprise me to see him take one of those punts back this year for a touchdown. Caught 44 passes last year, six touchdowns, 576 receiving yards he last was, season for Dylan Stoner. So he's a receiving yeah. and special teams threat, Baldy. He was the 400 meter state track champion 
in that difficult event. Cornelius looking at different options, and he finds one open in the middle of the field. Down goes Tylen Wallace, but to the South Alabama 35. Well, he found his second option really well that time, finding Wallace in the middle of the field. It wasn't his first read, but he went through his progressions quickly, and he found the open receiver. You really could see the going through yeah. the progressions for Cornelius there. Again, Mike Gundy told us yesterday he knows this offense like the back of his hands. You have to verbal everything. You have to signal everything. You don't fall off a truck and run this offense, no. but he's been behind Mason Rudolph studying it for four years. And he knows it. And he got that ball away, but it's a little low under duress trying to go to Chuba Hubbard. Third quarter just comes to an end. Jason Milner's pressure forced the low pass and the incompletion of what is, as Baldy said, the final play of the third quarter. 41-13 is the lead for Oklahoma State. After three, this is Fox College Football. State Cowboys lead the South Alabama Jaguars 41-13. And Mike Gundy and company are ready to go to start the fourth quarter. Wasting no time. Quick snap. There's a jump by the defensive line. There's a throw. One receiver, two defenders. Incomplete on the free play. And that's all Cornelius was doing. He knew he had the free play. He saw the offsides by Tyree Turner of South Alabama. And so he was just... Offside. Defense number 19. Five-yard penalty, repeat second down. Jason Milliner along with Turner. Here's the stats after three quarters. 505 yards of offense for Oklahoma State. Only 85 yards rushing. By the way, 342 of those 505 yards have been on first down snaps. They're averaging almost 10 yards per first down snap after three quarters. Just saw South Alabama's 10th penalty. Cornelius keeps on moving and rolls and throws. And that is dug out on the sideline by Tylen Wallace. Yep. But that was all Cornelius keeping that ball alive. I mean, just you see all these drills that these quarterbacks do with people throwing, you know, all kinds of things at him and trying to distract him. He keeps his eyes down the field as he moves his feet. Well, this is a night for Tylen Wallace. Ten catches. He just went over 170 yards. I'm sorry, 166, not quite over 170, but he's on the doorstep. Need somebody to help him out here. Cornelius out of the back of the end zone. Out of the pocket, Cornelius, even though it wasn't reflected necessarily on that play, Brian, but he can make things happen out of the pocket. Well, Mason Rudolph could do the same thing. You know, they're both... Mason Rudolph it was, was stronger, physically stronger than Cornelius, but they both have big height, a big arm, and uh, they can extend these plays. We've seen it all night from them. Not going to be easy to keep him locked up in the pocket. Second and ten, delay. Chuba Hubbard. Hubbard in space. Here he goes. He's got a block from a receiver, and he's in. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. Twenty-two yards on the run, Barley, and the lead is extended to 47-13. Well, it's just a draw play. Here's Hubbard here. Just a draw. Let the pass rush come up the field. Three defenders come up the field. And then the lane just was created. And Hubbard, who's got world-class speed, run a lot of events outside of Canada in track and field. 10 5 500 meter speed from Chuma Hubbard. And he shows it on this run. For 
13 minutes left to play, 48-13. Oklahoma State scored 24 unanswered points, and the Jimmy Johns player of the game is Taylor Cornelius, the Cowboys quarterback. Well, it's been the touch on the ball in the end zone. It's his ability to keep the eyes down the field, Mark, that has impressed me all night. He doesn't read the rush, and he's able to extend these plays, whether he's throwing it, turning the corner here, taking off with it and dashing. Look at this job in the pocket right there. That's just how you coach it up while your eyes are up. And all young quarterbacks can learn a lot by watching Corndog right here tonight. How he's able to extend the plays as he looks down the field trying to always be a thrower first and a runner second. He does have a 34-yard run tonight, but more importantly, he has thrown for 428 yards, a touchdown, and two picks. Now, it's a luxury having a redshirt senior that has played behind Mason Rudolph all these years to be able to come in and take over. Run out of the end zone by South Alabama's Trey Minner and doesn't even make it back to the 15-yard line. And the thing about Taylor Cornelius, Brian, that Mike Gundy told us yesterday, and there are other players that would fit this example, but he's a player that fits the Stillwater culture. Mike said, you know, we're college town America. Mm -hmm. We get players here. We train them. We take care of them. We do the right thing. We bring them along. We hold them accountable, but we don't beat them to death. We get kids who want to be here, and Taylor Cornelius proves it because yeah. he sat behind a good quarterback at Mason Rudolph waiting for his opportunity to play as a redshirt senior, and here he is having success. Yeah, you know, he's also a graduate. He's got a, a managing and marketing degree, which is always nice, which he came here for. Caught by Kawan Baker on the first snap tonight from Cole Garvin, that quarterback for South Alabama. Evan North started and has played most of the game. Cephas Johnson has been on in a couple of series. Well, what has kind of gone unnoticed here is how well this Oklahoma State defense has played the second half. They, they have shut South Alabama out, and they are having a hard time just getting a first down right now. The Oklahoma State defense has scored in the second half on a Devin Harper pick six. And really close to Kima Sibaran, the transfer from Texas A&M, graduate transfer. He's got two years of eligibility to play, by the way, as a graduate transfer. Nicole Garvin started last year for South Alabama here at Oklahoma State, and he got knocked out of the game in the second series, never came back in. Going into play in this game, he has 15 career appearances and exactly 2,000 career passing yards for the Jaguars. Keeping it, diving over the 20, short of the first down by three yards on third and 10. Now he saw a little bit of a lane, but then, as the Jaguars have seen all night, those lanes close awfully quickly. And they've got nothing else to do but to put their big left-footed punter, Waitman, out here on the field. Steve Campbell looks on. That's the new head coach, of course, at South Alabama. Never had a losing season at Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College where he's won a junior college national championship at Delta State where he won a D2 national championship nor at Central Arkansas where in four seasons he had two 10-win campaigns for the Bears. Dylan Stoner runs the ball on the punt return. 43-yard line is where Oklahoma State will have the ball. Will we see any more of Taylor Cornelius? We'll find out after this with the Cowboys up by 35 points. Oklahoma State is at home, leading South Alabama 48-13, but right now we take a peek at the upcoming road schedule for them. We're brought to you by Logan's Roadhouse. They won't play on the road until September 29th when they visit the Kansas Jayhawks, Kansas State, and Baylor, but it gets tough on the road at the end, Brian, with OU and TCU. Well, what a game it was against Bedlam in Oklahoma a year ago in Baker Mayfield and what that turned out to be. DeAndre Whitty is now a quarterback. It's a handoff and a run up the middle by J.D. King. Last year on the road in their 10-3 season, Oklahoma State was the only FBS school to go 6-0 yep. away from home. Running it again is King. And he reaches the South Alabama 30. Markers down. A little extracurricular activity here.
after the play was over. Unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number one, offense number eight. Both fouls are offset, and the penalty's canceled. The down will count. It's third down now. That's number eight and number one's first unsportsmanlike conduct fouls of the game. Of course, another one by either player will be ejected. Way Steve. back in the second quarter, by the way, there was an ejection for Oklahoma State's yeah. Kenneth Edison Magruder for targeting. Steve Campbell's given a, just a whole lot to his team about how to behave and how to respond and just coaching off as hard as he possibly can right now as Wooty takes this snap. He's a sophomore from Bossier City, Louisiana. Mop up duty against Missouri State last week, and Wood T went one for three throwing the ball, and that one is incomplete. By the way, Ken Williamson incorrectly identified that it would be third down. It is first down and ten when Wood T just threw that interception. Wood T is, yeah, just a, a redshirt sophomore, so this is his third year that he's been here. He understands the offense. He's run the scout team here as he signals the play into the skilled players. As Woodsy relieves Taylor Cornelius with three minutes gone by in the fourth quarter. Cowboys have the ball at the 30 of South Alabama. Woodsy keeping, pump fake, run. Oh, block. That was, as Brian called it earlier, a deep pleader from the Cowboy back, Logan Carter. And they're going to flag him for hitting a defenseless player, and but it was vicious. Blindside block, Brian? Yeah. Personal foul, targeting. This is fair. Number 87. Previous play is under review. Now, let's just see here. Here he is looking for somebody to block, and he leans, comes back. It's one of those peel back blocks, yeah, it's a Brian. Peel back. It looked like he hits him in the shoulder of the face mask. I don't know that he hit him in the helmet. I, he definitely didn't hit him in the helmet. It looked like he led with his shoulder. I think this might get overturned for targeting. Looks like it's a pretty clean hit, to be honest with you. Oh, well, it is. He definitely led with his crown of the helmet. But he hit him in the shoulder, I thought. You know, we saw Ben Banigou for TCU last week. And, and After a call further was review, reversed. the ruling on field is confirmed. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Correction. It's on the offense. 87 yard. 87 is the culprit. 15 yard penalty. Second down. He's not arguing. He's going right off the field. Right into the locker room. And he won't be able to play until the second no. half of next week's game against Boise State. It, sometimes you have to look at intent. I didn't think there was any intent to. He's just looking for somebody to block there on the outside. You know, you referenced earlier the fact that the leading with the helmet and the helmet to helmet and those kind of plays are trying to be taken out of the yeah. game. Another thing that certainly is drawing more and more attention is that peel back blind yeah. side block that we just saw. Well, it used to be commonplace, but they are trying to clean it up. Defenseless player. I didn't think he hit him in the helmet, helmet to helmet. I thought it was more to the chest area, but they want to take those plays out. So that's how you have to do it. They all get reviewed. We've seen some overturned. But two of them for Mike Gundy today for his, his team. Kenneth Edison McGruder in the first half and now Logan Carter in the second half. Well, they have options at Cowboy back. Britton Abbott, who Brian spoke of earlier. We've seen Jelani Woods with a big catch in the passing game as one of the Cowboy backs. Sione Finefei-Uyaki, of course, is an option as well. He caught a touchdown pass against Missouri State last week. Well, the bad part for Logan Carter is he was getting a chance to play here in the fourth quarter. And now he's not going to get any of those reps the rest of the game. DeAndre Woodty is getting reps at quarterback right now for the first time tonight. And he will run the ball up to the 25. Inside the 26 of South Alabama. Spotted shy of the 25. Also on the roster at quarterback is Spencer Sanders, who they're very high on. A big recruit out of Denton, Texas, Denton Ryan. But he just got here in July and just simply doesn't know the offense well enough right now. 
a guy like Wood Tees in his third season. Here. And remember Drew Brown, who threw yeah. for over 5,000 yards over the last two years in Hawaii and 37 touchdowns. But he's sort of in the same boat, just doesn't know the offense yet. Wood T does, and Wood T finds J.D. King, who will run into the sideline, collide with the defender, reaches the end zone, flags are down at the end, but it's a touchdown for Oklahoma State for J.D. King. J.D. King made a player miss on the outside. He's just coming this way here on a flare. We've seen Justice Hill scoring the same play. He made Bull Barge miss. And then he didn't just run into the end zone. He no. decided to, to deliver a hit to Spencer Perry as he did. <laughs> yeah. Slowed up just to deliver one. <laughs> scored a touchdown in. Got himself a knockdown at the same time. With 10.26 left in the game, and it is now 34. I'm sorry, 30 unanswered points. After the score, unsportsmanlike conduct, 27 of the offense. A penalty occurred after the score will be enforced on the succeeding spot. That's number 27's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the day. Well, it wasn't the hit that he had on the defender. It was the taunting afterwards that they flagged. points now since 24 13 Oklahoma State has opened it all the way to 55 13 with 10 26 left the last score by JD King powering his way into the end zone push-ups around here in Stillwater with the offense that they've had over the last several years you stay in shape you I do mean, put up 58 points last week they've got 55 right now but things are gonna get tougher around here Boise State comes in and they got a 20th ranked team coming in they were handling business tonight it'll be a much better test for Oklahoma State and for Mike Gundy scoring drive of seven plays 42 yards ending with Keandre Woodtee's first career touchdown pass like the running backs all sit in order right there, don't they? Like assigned seats. They all had a hand in it last week. They've all had a hand in it this week. Short kickoff, Trey Minter. Minter looks much more elusive in the return game than he does <laughs> as a running back. Of course, Oklahoma State's defense has something to say about that. And their defense has been very good as the Saltgrass Salt Steakhouse second half game summary will show because they have held South Alabama tonight to 182 yards. No points in the second half. 592 yards in the game for Oklahoma State in total. Well, it's been all phases of the defense, too. It's been tackling, penetration, pass rush for Jim Knowles, and then the coverage has just been a big blanket on these receivers that had a decent first half for South Alabama. Defense has scored tonight. Pick six by Devin Harper in the third quarter. Running the ball. Oh, it opens up for DeAndre Moore. One of the biggest plays in the run game. And I think it probably will be the biggest play in the running game. The longest run South Alabama had prior to that was 13 yards. Well, that was the best power run for sure that they've had. Breaking some tackles here. Just an inside handoff, an outside zone. He breaks one tackle. Finally brought down on the outside. And it's at the 43. 19 yards on the run for Deontay Moore. The biggest run of the night for South Alabama. Ball came out of the end of this run by Maurice Mayo. I'm sorry, it was Moore again. With nine and a half minutes to play. Play was down. We mentioned at the beginning so much inexperience up front for the South Alabama offensive line, but you know, you're looking at Roy Albritton right there, 71. Been rotating in there at right guard throughout the night. He's getting some reps. They played about seven guys last week. They've been playing seven tonight, trying to get them as much experience as they can, getting ready for their own conference play. <laughs> Got to get the chin strap buckled there for Max Chanty. Oh, 
Moore runs the ball again to the Oklahoma State 38. Cameron we Murray with that tackle. You were talking about the offensive line. We noted earlier tonight they have three players who made their first start last week. They have another in Troy Thingstad at left tackle who made his third career start tonight. Ryan Alexander from Floral Park, New York, the only offensive lineman, the starting right tackle, who has a lot of experience as a starter with 18 career starts as of tonight. Tell you what, Floral Park, New York to Mobile, Alabama, that's, <laughs> that, that's some recruiting. Zeke Powell is the other tackle right now on the left. Go. Crunch. They meet at the quarterback. Down went Cole Garvin. Darian Daniels and Amen Ogbong Bamigo. Garvin lost his helmet. You cannot hold the ball against this kind of pressure. They're coming right up the middle here. Well, that was a free run by the captain. Ogbong Bamiga. And he is, yeah, that's right. He is a captain. One of the four captains for Oklahoma State today. Pulled his helmet right off, too. It was actually wasn't his hand that pulled it off. He got caught underneath the shoulder pad. And Cameron Murray was the other defender who arrived along with Ogbong Bamiga at the same time at quarterback Cole Garvin. That's how Car that's how Garvin got hurt. Five game, offense, five yard penalty, fourth down. Saying that's how Garvin got injured last year against yeah. Oklahoma State. Similar type sack. South Alabama has 12 penalties now tonight. Meanwhile, Oklahoma State has 100 penalty yards. Both coaches will want to discuss that with their teams regardless of result tonight. Uh, here's a problem in the punt game, a collision. Real communication problem. Landon Wolf is able to field it. And he's down instantly. 7.35 to go. Big lead for the Cowboys at home. 7.35 to go. Oklahoma State 55, South Alabama 13. Last year, Oklahoma State was amongst the top three teams in the Big 12. And those top three teams, Brian, are all having to change quarterbacks and break in new ones this year. Kenny Hill gone from TCU. Mason Rudolph, of course, gone here in Stillwater. And Baker Mayfield. The Heisman Trophy winner last year at Oklahoma and then now with the Cleveland Browns. I tell you, the replacements don't look too bad. Kyler Murray watching him against UCLA today. Big win against Florida Atlantic last week. He looks pretty special. Ryan Haymaker is at running back right now. He had 10 carries last week. The junior from Collinsville, Oklahoma, and he'll have some time here to carry the ball at the end of this game for the Cowboys. Well, it's good when you have a lead like this and you run off somewhere around 31 straight points. So the haymaker can get in there and get some carries and make all that practice time pay off. Woodkey gets them lined up right now. Woodkey threw a touchdown pass on the last drive. It bounces out to the right side and is over the 35, and that's what he needed for the first down. Easily past the 35, spotted down at the 39. With under seven minutes to play. Alabama will get ready for Texas State next week. That's a Sun Belt Conference game. Sun Belt for Conference South, game, yeah, yeah for first Alabama. conference game for Steve Campbell. It's a 10 team conference, the Sun Belt, with two five team divisions. South Alabama picked to be third in the five team Eastern Division. The best running backs in the Big 12 now take center stage with those three teams we talked about having to replace those outstanding quarterbacks. Justice Hill led the Big 12 in rushing last year. Rodney Anderson, 18 touchdowns last year. They hope he's healthy after an injury today. We haven't even talked about Iowa State's David Montgomery, who was dynamite last season as the Cyclones had a wonderful run to a bowl game winning in the Liberty Bowl. And then don't forget about Darius Anderson at TCU and trying to be a vital part of that offense with Sean Robinson now taking yeah. over for Kenny Hill, at quarterback for the Frogs. Well, you know, at Darius Anderson, he got hurt against the Sooners last year, missed the rest of the season, but he was off to a, a great start. You know, and then you, if you look at what Rodney Anderson did against Georgia in that playoff game, he ran for 200 yards against Georgia. 
the worst defensive effort Georgia had all year against the running back. He came on the last eight games of the season. Wood T is wrestled down to the backfield on third down and four. Brought down by Chase Miller. Now the top three teams of the Big 12 from last year all have seen experienced, talented, productive quarterbacks and productive at a very, very high level move on, Brian. Yeah. And so now that puts a lot of, on the shoulders of the running backs. Well, the Heisman Trophy winner, the first pick in the draft, and, you know, a guy that we, we talk to these, these assistant coaches and head coaches around the league, and everybody that's been through Texas Tech and Oklahoma will tell you Baker Mayfield was accurate on his deep ball from the day he got on campus at Texas Tech. Lincoln Riley loved him. I think he's going to have a great NFL career. Hunt is going to be killed. Bad field position for South Alabama with 440 left in the game. And with more in this discussion about quarterbacks moving on and new quarterbacks and running backs who have to shoulder a lot of the load, here's Leslie McCaslin. Well, guys, we joked earlier about how the running backs from Oklahoma State haven't had a lot of... Um, well, they haven't had a lot of yardage to be <laughs> specific out there today. It hasn't been their best game, but they are by far the strength of this offense. And Justice Hill in particular, Gundy said he was, quote, special. He could do it all. And he said he would be hard to find somebody that's better than him in the nation right now. And when I talked to Mike Yersich just about this group as a whole before the game, he couldn't say enough about how good this group is. Not just talented and athletic, but what a good group of guys they are. So they really feel like they have some Something special at running back this year and they have the depth too much and a defense man just scored some points is this going to be ruled a safety amen Ogbong Bamiga was in that stop as well but forward progress is just outside the goal line Ogbong Bamiga had a sack on the last drive and he almost records a safety here Brian well I think he's going to get just enough here forward progress was across the goal line they're marking it at the one foot line right now this defense has scored one touchdown on a Devin Harper interception. Jarek Bernard was part of that stop as well. And just looking for a little bit of room. And they do find that room on a Maurice Mayo plunge forward to the four-yard line before Brendan Evers from Bixby, Oklahoma, brings him down. Yeah. But anytime a defense gets an offense trapped down here inside the five, that's what you're thinking about. You're thinking about that big play, that negative play that can result in a safety. Great defenses are scoring defenses. Running play, nowhere. Last week, Jim Knowles and the defense recorded nine three and outs against Missouri State. They have eight three and outs tonight. Now Jim Knowles is, he's played a lot of players. They're learning a new scheme and a new system. They're, they're learning him, he's learning them. And they're gonna get a ranked team coming in next week and you're going to need all these bodies you're going to need a belief in a, a real good strong belief in what Jim Knowles is teaching punt by Corliss Waitman not a good punt out of bounds yesterday Mike Gundy told us I like to hire coaches and by the way Mike Yersich who came from Division II Shippensburg State yep. is is in the same mold but he said I like to hire coaches that have been at places where they don't have the best players and have had success we don't have a lot of NFL players that come through here but we have players as or more athletic than what Duke does and Jim was very successful there in a statistic I believe in top 20 in the nation in points allowed per possession Mike said all other defensive statistics especially in the Big 12 should be thrown out the window other than points allowed well, per possession. Well, it's true because he said the average number of possessions in a game in the Big 12 is between 15 and 16. And so if you keep the team under 30 points a game, you go points per possession, that's a good stat. Down goes Wood T on a run, stepping up into the hole with Sterling Fisher. And 15-16 is the number of drives that the teams have had tonight. Oklahoma State, 15 drives. South Alabama, 16 drives. And that point about how many possessions occur mm -hmm. in these Big 12 games. With these high-powered offenses. But we have seen Brian, as Ryan Haymaker runs the ball again, if you are a defensive coordinator with the scheme and a commitment to it, 
Look at what happened with John Haycock of the double cloud at yep. Iowa State last year. Defenses are not helpless in this league by no. any stretch of the imagination. No, Jay, John Haycock changed his defense early in the season last year. He went down to Oklahoma and beat the Sooners. Uh, you look at what Gary Patterson has consistently done at TCU. Uh, I think it, the, the whole conference gets a bad name when it comes to defense. You know, Mike Gundy said, did you see... Oh, here we go. Haymaker getting out of that yeah. tackle, keeping that play alive. My gunny pointed out that Georgia team was pretty darn good. Yes. In the semifinals, and Oklahoma put up a lot of points on them. There's Mike, whose team is less than 90 seconds away from recording the 116th victory for Coach Gundy since taking over in 2005 at his alma mater here in Stillwater. He wants to take as much time off the clock as he can here. And he'd love to pick up the first down and then take a knee and put a bow on this one. Get to 2-0. and oh. Fourth down, and Haymaker is stopped short of the first down, so there will be a change of possession with 55 seconds left in the game. And Brian noted that for Steve Campbell in South Alabama, next up on the docket is a conference game with Texas State. The Bobcats from San Marcos. Steve Campbell and South Alabama, I do think, have good days ahead because the track record of 19 coaching seasons and never having a losing season, that, that speaks volumes. He thought it was a really attractive job. You know, this is the 10th season of football at South Alabama. They've had success in other sports. Basketball, they've been very good. Uh, he follows all of it. Baseball has yeah. been a game, a win away from going to the College World Series for a couple of times recently. That's the first catch tonight for Davin Flanord, who a long time ago tonight yeah. down to punt at the one-yard line. There's Taylor Cornelius. His second start will be a successful one with 428 passing yards tonight. Well, it's got to be fun for him to have sat for four years here. Watched Mason Rudolph set all kinds of records. And now make all that patience pay off for him. It's got to be a lot of fun to get out here and finally play. Well, there are seven quarterbacks in Oklahoma State history who have had 400-plus passing yards in a game. Mike Gundy's one of them. <laughs> Mason Rudolph is one of yeah. them. Taylor Cornelius wow. is now one of them. That's a select group? Yeah. Seven. We just mentioned three of the seven who have had 400-yard passing performances for Oklahoma State. Number 20, Boise State, will be the opponent in Stillwater next week. And Oklahoma State will play South Alabama again. They're uh, on the docket to play each other in 2023 to complete this two-for-one series between the Big 12 squad, the Oklahoma State Cowboys, and the Sun Belt South well, Alabama Jackets. You know, there's a big debate about how to schedule these games here as you get ready for conference. I mean, obviously, Oklahoma took on UCLA today. Uh, some teams, you know, we saw West Virginia go into Tennessee and win a big game last week. The big game for Oklahoma State will be next week against Boise, a real quality opponent. Penalties will be a discussion point, I would think, probably more than anything else going into next week for Mike Gundy. You did see two players ejected for targeting and 100, approximately 100 yards in penalties tonight, but it's a win, 55-13, Brian. Last 31 points of the game scored by Oklahoma State. It was a great State. second half defensively. They cleaned things up defensively. They didn't get any big plays, balls down the field. Defensively, they played locked up. And for Taylor Cornelius, he's getting more and more comfortable, more and more reps. He made a lot of plays out of the pocket tonight as he gets ready for a big opponent next Saturday here. Uh, you know, and for uh, South Alabama, they came in here, they competed, they played hard, they put up 13 points in the first half. They did not embarrass themselves. I think they've got a lot to be proud of. Well, we'll see if Oklahoma State cracks the AP poll. They're already in the coaches' poll. They're just a couple of spots out of the Associated Press top 25. Maybe they will be there when the new poll comes out. Mike Gundy is now 31-4 and four against non-Power 5 opponents, and Oklahoma State has eight straight non-conference wins. Their final score tonight in Stillwater, favoring the Cowboys by a margin of 55-13 over South Alabama. Next Saturday, more Big 12 football on 
FSM. Kansas hosting Rutgers at 12 Eastern. Bill Steiner in Kansas State will take on UTSA. Brian and I have the call about it for Eastern. For Brian Baldinger, Leslie McCaslin, and our fine crew in Stillwater, Oklahoma, I'm Mark Falwell. Thanks for watching.